Well, a very warm welcome to the Cedar Court Hotel here in Bradford. Fittingly home of the 2018 IPA World Pool Championships. Delighted to be back here at the Cedar Court Hotel. We've seen some wonderful action here over the years and over the course of this week as well. Stephen Jameson here alongside Simon Webb to bring you through what should be a really, really exciting next game. But before we look ahead to that, let's take a look at what we've seen already over the course of this championships. These are the results from the last 32, the second round proper of the competition, and we saw some fantastic games. Yeah, absolutely. Saw uh, the the. The most exciting game uh, of that would be Andy Blurton beating Ronan McCarthy. Uh, Ronan was the number two seed for this event. Uh, the match went all the way to a deciding frame and there was some twists and turns. It was a 45 minute frame with some um, some shocks and some luck and that's probably been the match of the tournament so far in the outer arena. Um, there's been um, Ben Davis beating Ross Fernie. Ben Davis is one of the big favorites for the tournament as well and he was pushed all the way by Ross. Uh, you see the world champion at the bottom there, Craig Marsh. He made no mistake against Scott. We saw that on the, the television screens last night. And this is the action from this morning. The last 16 was played this morning. As you can see, still quite a few matches in progress. We did see, however, an absolute barnstormer just finished around about 10 minutes ago between Dan Davey and Simon Ward. And Simon, who we will see coming up on Free Sports very shortly, taking on the world number one, Mark Farnsworth. What a game that was, ending on a snooker double black. Yeah, a bit of, <laughs> bit of fortune for Simon there in the uh, penultimate frame, or what turned out to be the final frame. He win, win, won that set 4-3, 4-2, sorry. Um, yeah, absolute cracking match. Um, and he's only, only finished just 10 minutes ago, so he'll be straight back on, which will be interesting to see how he handles that. Uh, the big shock from this morning's games is the world champion Craig Marsh is out. He lost 3-2 after being 2-0 up against fellow Welshman Christian Phillips. There are some matches still in action, and looking at those, uh, Clint Hyanson 2-0 down to Jimmy Carney. Uh, potential shock there. Clint is one of the uh, big favourites for this event. Uh, and above him, you can see Neil Raybone versus Liam Dunster. That's a, a cracking matchup going Neil's way at the moment, but uh, Liam is a fantastic young Scottish player and, and one to watch for certain, so we'll see how that develops. And ben Davis, the um, great Welsh hope, he's 2-1 uh, up over Ryan Clark in what's been an, an absolute epic battle so far. They've been on for quite a few hours now. be interesting to keep up to date with those and see how those develop. Yeah, some fantastic clashes already today. We're hoping to see another one. Mark Farnsworth versus Simon Ward there. The first quarter final will be the first action up on Free Sports. We cannot wait to watch that one. Before we head into the action, though, we're going to speak to the IPA chairman, Kevin Barton, who's been talking to us a little bit about the championships and the state of play in the world of pool. IPA. Um, welcome to Free Sports. Welcome to lots of live pool on TV. Um, just for a lot of people out there who play pool in the pubs and clubs, we all are used to playing in the pubs with these incredibly tight pockets where it's really hard to play pot a ball and, and then playing with these wide pockets where it's almost too easy to pot a ball. Tell me where the IPA fits in with, with these different forms of the game. Well, the IPA uh, embraces black ball rules, um, so uh, we play on the seven before seven foot by four foot tables. Um, uh, there are other versions of the game generally played on the nine foot table, so the American disciplines. So you refer to the, the bigger balls, the bigger pockets. Uh, we play on the, the smaller tables, tighter pockets, uh, traditional reds and yellows that we've all played in the pub at uh, some point in time, be it over a beer or uh, maybe a bit more serious. And, uh, and yeah, so that, that's what we play. We think they're the, the best rules about. We think they're a great advert for our game. And uh, they're exciting to play and uh, exciting to watch. And ultimately, that's what it's all about. Yeah. With rules, and we don't, we don't want to get into specific rules here, but 
you know, we've all been in situations where you go from one pub to the next, everybody has a different rule about the black and two shots following or two or whatever and whatever. You know, where, where does black ball fit in? Is, is, you know, are there different versions of the, the pub game, we'll call it, with the tighter pockets? And, and how does black ball sort of set itself aside from, from those other versions? So there's probably three different versions um, of, of, of our game. Um, so we've got the traditional, the old rules, uh, there are real tippy tappy rules where you know one frame could last an hour um, easily. Um, then the rules uh, evolved and the uh, world rules came about, and uh, you know they were a, a big step forward for the game as well. Um, and my, my view is that Black Ball have now taken that step another uh, another step forward uh, in part of the rules evolution, as it were. They're more attacking, um, they reward creativity, and um, creates a lot of excitement. And uh, like I said, very enjoyable to play. Uh, and to watch. So the IPA was born under the, the, the sort of new regime just about five, six, seven years ago. Uh, you took the helm as chairman and you, you had a, a, a big team behind you and you've got a big team behind you here today. Here we are, live TV cameras, uh, there's going to be a lot of pool on free sports over the next three days and of course we've got the Monday night Champions Cup which is going to be something special. Um, you know, Do you feel this is a really big step up for, for the IPA tour now and for some of these amazing players to really show show their wares well it's a, it's a massive step forward it's something that the game has never had before you know this is quite you know we're in uncharted territory um, but it's all it's all positive but I think it's all down to you know the, the hard work that we've put in over the past five six years and it's been a difficult journey and uh, you know, we've, we've had to come through some some challenges uh, but we've got through them and uh, you know here we are um, in, in, a, in a position that uh, the sport never mind the IP that the sport has never been in before yeah so it's it's really exciting and uh, you know it's great that I've got a really supportive team working with me uh, to help help drive it forward and, and that's what we're going to keep on doing one of the things that's very noticeable about the IPA tour is that you you do things properly and even from the setting of the big stage behind you and, and the you know the TV setup but all the tables that are, you can hear in the distance that they're still playing qualifying matches here um, that you know every table is, is really Really set to a very high standard and you know, I don't think I've heard a single person complaining about the state mm. of the tables you know you really do pay attention to detail with the tour. Well I think it helps being a player myself you know and I set high standards and um, you know whilst we don't have the budgets of some more high profile sports I think we've, we've just about maxed everything that we can do with what we've got and um, you know we've continued to develop and invest in the things that are important uh, you know at the end of the day we're just like another business you know and um, we, we treat it like business and uh, you know we're always building for the for the longer term rather than taking quick short-term fixes so um, that's that's our approach and quality will always prevail and that has been our number one priority from from day one we've not always got it right but uh, you know more often than not we do yeah and also noticeable to see this beautiful table you've got set up here um, you know you do need sponsors to make this happen and, and you know you do have a range of sponsors that that have helped you get to where you are right now mm. yeah from from day one, uh, Aramith uh, who provide the, the balls that we use the Pro Cups um, and now, now Strachan who are a part of that group uh, who provide this uh, superb 861 blue cloth. Um, you know, they're, they're really important partners. Uh, but now, you know, we're, we're, we're starting to get new partners on board. Uh, you know, obviously free sports uh, is great for us, uh, great for the exposure. We've got a new uh, betting partner, uh, Black Type, uh, which is great as well. So, and, uh, you know, lots of other partners, the Racker, who provide um, you know, the triangles, the new Rackers. So, yeah, we've got uh, lots of partners who are, you know, wanting to come on board now because now we can give value. Uh, you know, three or four years ago, you know, we wouldn't have been in that position, but we we built it the right way. Yeah. Um, just a little quick chat about the, the Champions Cup, which I think mm. we're all excited about, and and, and also the, the atmosphere. I think we're going to see at some of these clubs that you, you know you're you're giving. Um, local clubs a chance to put one of their top players in to go against some of your pros mm. and that, that should be quite feisty shouldn't it? The Champions Cup is going to be great uh, I mean it's it's a, another unique event that has never been done so we're going to have four players every Monday uh, battling, it, battling it out to get through to, to the final stages so it's going to be intense it's going to be like I say great atmosphere uh, we're taking it back out to the clubs and um, yeah looking forward to it and uh, all the top players in the IPA are going to, are going to be up against it against uh, against these qualifiers so um, yeah it's unique it's new and uh, it's great for the game
So how did you get into organising pool events and the IPA? Uh, well, um, where do we start? I mean, I was a professional player at the time, and um, of a, of a you know, decent standard, and um, I just felt that the sport was, was stagnating, not going anywhere, just drifting along, and um, I decided to do something about it. And um, didn't really know what I was letting myself in for. Um, I may have had a bit of an idea, but um, yeah, so um, I became chairman in 2011, at the end of 2011. And uh, you know we had some challenges to to overcome. But, um, you know we've had some great people uh, working for the IPA. Uh, you know Dan Roche, Andy McDonald uh, in the early days. Uh, you know and more recently now the great team. You know I won't name them all, but uh, you know we've got a great team now. that's all pushing in the right direction and just a pleasure to work with. You know and we've seen all the results of all that hard work both now and in the past. So Kevin, here we are. It's six years of the RPA tour, and it's certainly come a long way. What do you think about the future? You know, next three, four, five years. Have you got any sort of uh, dreams as to where it could be then? Well, lots of dreams, but um, to keep our feet on the ground, we've still got to uh, keep growing, keep developing. There's a lot of things we want to uh, work on and improve on. Uh, and I think if we keep uh, doing the right things, then hopefully good things will happen you know, further down the line. You know, ultimately, we want to be uh, you know, up there with the darts and snooker and, uh, and have great events um, on TV and the players are earning great prize money. Uh, but you know we've uh, we've got a journey to get there, but uh, you know we're heading in the right direction. So um, let's just see what happens over the next uh, next few years. I must add, it's one of those weird anomalies in my mind that darts and snooker are sports that are quite difficult to play for the standard bloke in the street. You know, like throwing darts at boards and hitting wands and going off the board, etc. Pool is probably the one sport that's a bar sport that everybody mm. is decent at. We can all pot a ball, and we can all hit a fluke, and and, and it is a, a sort of enigma really that has never really made it into the mainstream television it, you know do you think is, is it perhaps because of the stagnation maybe of, of years to pass in the past that um, you know there's nobody really being able to take the ball by the horns and move pull forward well I think that's definitely had an impact and obviously with the uh, economic recession and a lot of pubs uh, uh, pool tables being taken out of pubs that's obviously had an impact on the on the overall sport um, but you know uh, that was then this is now you know we're now in a different place uh, pool is absolutely thriving and um, there's a buzz about the sport again that there hasn't been for uh, for a long time. So uh, long may that continue. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you, gentlemen. And that was the the man at the top, the IP che IPA chairman Kevin Barton, speaking ahead of this game. This is the lag between Mark Farnsworth and Simon Ward. A game we are very much looking forward to. Mark Farnsworth ranked number one heading into this competition. Simon Ward ranked number eight. So this quarterfinal has gone to seed. Both of them have had fairly lengthy uh, routes through, at least especially if you name Simon Ward. He was on our very first game of the competition. He opened things up with, for me, the game of the tournament so far, 3-2 versus Mark Boyle. It went the very, very distance, all four hours of it on day number one. Yeah, an absolute cracker all the way to the end. And his second round game was a touch easier against JJ Fall, 3-0. And we literally just had him finish against Stan Davey. 3-2 in that one as well. He's played a lot more pool than Mark Farnsworth has in this competition. He's sailed through three zip in all of his yeah, games. Mark's been been on it this week. 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. Looks very, very sharp. And like you said, he's had a much easier route to this stage. He's had a, because of his uh, easier route, he's had a bit more of a break. He's been about an hour and a half, two hours off the table. Where Simon's probably had 15, 20 minutes. So it'll be interesting to see how that will play out over the first set here. Yeah, an interesting dynamic for sure. That's Simon Ward breaking now, but the ball goes straight in off. The white ball, that is, at least, which he'll be disappointed with. He's just having a look at the state of the table to see where he's left. Mark Farnsworth is a lovely break, two balls down, but the white one down as well, which is not what he was after. Yeah, so Mark gets a free shot here to, to do what he wants. He gets to develop the areas he, th he sees as a problem. First glance, it looks like yellows might be by the choice here. So we'll be looking just to try and, try and make yellows as easy as possible. His biggest problem he's got is, is the black next to the red. 30 seconds. 
just here. He needs to, he's going to have to try and work that out. He may not choose to use his free shot to develop that if he goes yellows. It's because he may pot the yellow and then get on the black, but it's not guaranteed. So he may clear that with his free shot. But he's also got a little cluster up at the top, but that's less of a problem. As you can see, he's going straight after the... Looks to probably make the black... Play the, play the pot the red by playing the black. There we go. It's not come out ideally for him. Yeah, those yellows just at the top are all they're nicely gathered, but they're all in the way of each other. And if he's looking for yellows, remember he's, he's not, that wasn't a nominated shot. If you're not all too familiar with the rules here, he's not automatically reds. Yeah, he's now, it's a still a free table, so I still believe he'll be looking at yellows. It looks like he can take a yellow to the top top left it's, it's up to him he could play into this little can this area or he may try to come off the top cushion and cannon this red that's blocking those four full in the face something like that but he if a fuller can contact would have been better but he's finished okay because he's on one in the middle as long as the yellow down the red and we can just see him look there as long as that still went it was a nice uh, nice bit of luck for him or controlled luck shall we say so it's worked out okay i think he's just having a look as well to see if the one closest to that top corner pocket does pass and i think the keyboard will go through that gap and it does so all of a sudden now mark barnsworth looks very much in control of this frame no more real problem areas apart from perhaps the, the ball on the bottom cushion as we look at it here. yeah if he he either probably has to leave this till his last ball the yellow on the rail next to the red or he could probably screw into it now staying on the yellow at the top of the table but he wouldn't have a great angle on his next shot so he's got a couple of choices here if he's got the full pocket for that yellow i'll be very surprised if he moves into it Okay, so he's going to take the yellow to the left centre now. So he is going to leave the yellow next to the red for his last ball. So from this, he'll be playing onto the yellow. But it's a bit more in the open to the top right. He does have the angle to get across the one on the rail. He's probably, but it's it's a little bit straight for him. Yeah, in the middle pocket from from this position at least isn't really one way we want to really f try and force an angle in. I think he might be the way he's just the way he's queuing up. Yeah, he is going to force a cross. Shows how well he's queuing. Yeah, he's, he would have liked to have been a bit straighter on this. The, the um, red, I think he can avoid the red on the rail. So when he pots this in, I think he can just avoid the red on the rail. But the red that's in the open can become a bit of a blocker here. He needs to be very careful with this positional shot. Oh, he's played into it. He just had a little bit of side on that to make sure if he cannons into that red, he's got no problems and he's played that lovely. Should be no more problems in this frame. Oh, nicely played from Mark Farnsworth. Black is available from the very first shot of the frame that he played. Simple screw back and relatively simple long shot here. Fairly straight, ball close to the pocket. Shouldn't be any problems from here on out for the number one ranked player in this competition. Still yet to win the World Championships. Mark Farnsworth, he's looking to amend that this year. And if he keeps playing the way he is, he would absolutely not bet against him. This is what he's been up to recently. Finally, the English professional, which he won against Andy Blurton back in May. Semis, quarters, semis, all the way, he's pretty much across the board. He's been very consistent. Yeah, very, very consistent. He's there or thereabouts in every tournament he plays. He's always a danger man, always, always in contention. He's won a, I think he's, I believe he's won the most number of titles on the IPA Tour. Uh, it's quite impressive how he's gone over the last three or four seasons. How many of those would he trade in for the big one? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, definitely. There's the one title that eludes him. He's won everything else. And, uh, he's, I'm sure he's put some extra time in for this event to make sure he's absolutely in the right frame of mind to win this title. Certainly playing very, very nicely. We saw him on Free Sports yesterday as he dispatched Gary Clark, the Irishman, in their round two fixture. Struggled initially at the start. It was a relatively even face-off between those two. But as soon as he went 2-0 up and was able just to 
open his play up. He was in real good form. But that break, however, is dry. Oh, no, I didn't say it's dry. The red goes in right at the end to, uh, to make sure he's at the table again. Again, he's, he's had a, a quite a nice split here. The, he's the only he's going to be looking at yellows. The only yellow he can pot is to the top right as we look now. But all the other yellows are in the open. There's no clusters and there's no problems. It's a case of picking his, his pattern, getting his right route. The only ball that's a real problem or potential problem is this yellow here. And it is wide in the open, so it's not really a problem. I'm just trying to see what could go wrong for him. As I say that, he didn't want to cannon those reds first shot. And now he's... Going to have to pull out a slightly trickier pot than he wanted to. But he's, he hasn't really got a problem. It's, it's, it's a trickier pot, but he's still fine. He's got the, the yellow to the bottom right. He may have, he may have tried, been trying to play that cannon. He may, he may not have been able to avoid that cannon. So just by playing the cannon and trying to control it off the rail, he's probably as, as good as he could have hoped for, actually. 30 seconds. The biggest problem he has with that cannon, actually, is the red has gone across and blocked the top right pocket a little bit for him. And that's a pocket he probably needed. Yeah, he's just got to... He's, he's almost given himself an extra issue, in a, in a sense. Those two yellows quite close to each other in the middle of the table would have been nicely into the top right. Might just have to figure out a way to get them into their respective middle pockets, perhaps. Yeah, I think... I. They may pot into the, you could just see there, it's tight. If you wanted to play the plant into the bottom middle pocket as we look, it looks a little tight, that red looks like it's in its way. So those two yellows have become a problem with that red over the, the bottom right. He may be able to play one of them off the cushion, then off the red, and that will open the pocket up again for the other one. Extension. You can see there, he's just called for his time extension. Each player gets a 60-second shot clock, but they can have an extension of 30 seconds once. And Mark is using his hit just to make sure he's exactly happy with how he wants to proceed with his break here. He's just run through a little bit. I think he's going to... I don't know if he was playing onto the yellow just below it, the one to the furthest left of the table. I wonder whether he was playing onto this yellow just then and come up a fraction short, because he's... A little bit awkward on the other one to the, the middle as well. Or he may be looking at playing the, one of the yellows into the cushion and then into the red to then open up the pocket. By the way, not the easiest route when it looked pretty straightforward before that red moved. And that's the tricky nature of this game. And it looks like that's the shot he's playing. And he plays it really well. And all of a sudden, it has now has that a little bit easier. Has that red blocked the black? You see him pulling a face. No, it ha no, the red didn't block the black. It's just he was pulling a face, and it, I wondered whether the red had got in the way. But I think it's just he wanted to be a little bit straighter onto this yellow to the, the top right. He's got a, a slightly tricky angle on this. He's going to be going close to the red nearest the right centre, which makes controlling the position for the next ball quite tricky. And he doesn't, of course, have to worry about cannoning straight into the red and potting it as long as his yellow is good and constitute a foul so this one into the top corner he is nicely played but it's not the position he wanted at all no it's gone wrong from there but he's still got a shot he's he's sort of digging in this visit no shots really gone perfectly for him he's he's trying to get back on track and he had no chance, no choice but to cannon that red, and it was how he controlled the white off it. He's left himself a double. There's no other choice for him here. But he does need to play a nice positional shot as well. Control the white to the bottom, bottom part of the, the table. That's and that's a beautiful. Yeah, perfect shot from there. Really nicely played from Farnsworth. Smooth on the double, but just played it almost dead weight, really, just to knock into that red and set himself nicely up for the yellow. He's run up now for the black. Yeah, just uh, if he hit that any firmer, he would have been going up towards the black. So just accepted the black from a little bit more distance and not straight on. Should be no problem from here. You can see Mark Boyle in the background watching on. He was the man that 
Simon Ward dispatched in round number one. Frame. Hugely talented and it's a player. That game is a four hour epic. Let's make it off Simon Ward. He uh, comes to the table next. And this is his recent record. Had a great run to the final of the British Open in October, only to be beaten by Ronan McCarthy. And he's had a couple of good results as well. Semi final of the UK Open. Quarters of the Europeans. He's he's been in good been in good nick. Yeah, in 2017. Simon, Simon is a regular winner on the IPA tour. Normally wins a, a tournament a season. He didn't last year. The closest he got was the final of the frame, last the event, the 2017 frame, British Open. But he's there or thereabouts as well. Nearly every event. He comes again. White this time is safe as opposed to his first break, and he will be back. Ball did go down there. And we'll just take a look back at that. Got into them really nicely. Yeah, Simon has a very powerful break. He's got a nice big split there. You can see there's no clusters on this table. This is as a, a good a split as you could hope for. It was a red that went down, but Simon much fancies the yellows. Yeah, the reason he's gone yellows, every yellow was in, a, in the open. There was no problems, no no clusters. All he needs to do now is he's, he's got, he can play on a choice of, of yellows. Anywhere in the center of the table, he'll give himself a choice of, of uh, two or three yellows, depending on how far down the table he comes. So take the one to the top right now, top left as we look. That isn't great. He, he's cannon the black. He didn't want to go anywhere near that black. It looks like he can, it's difficult to tell whether the yellow goes past the other yellow or even if he's on it. That looks fairly tight and he may not be able to get past the black. If he can't, then he hasn't got a very easy next shot. You can see how it doesn't go. So he's looking, he's now looking at a plant, yellow onto yellow. He was looking for something easier than this when he came down the table. Plays it really nicely though. He should just about be on the yellow he originally planted with, but again, he would have preferred that to be a little easier. Yeah, he's a little thin on this next yellow. And the disadvantage of that, of course, it just gives you a little bit less cue ball control because you've got to play at a bit more pace. This, you feel this is the only shot that can really go wrong if he just overhits this shot. He just needs to. Well, he's played it with. He. He was too thin on the yellow. I thought he could play that playing ball and just drift up to the left-hand side, but he felt he couldn't, and he's played it with check side, and that's caused him to miss the pot. So that, that, the reason he missed that was all down to the position he was trying to put the white into. Oh, how many times do you see it? The white is in a lovely position for what would have been his next shot. He did overcut the yellow. And as he mentioned, the reds are quite bunched up together for Mark Farnsworth. It's, it's not the worst scenario. Yeah, the key for Mark is, is do these two reds, are, do they need to be moved or can they be potted straight? If they could be potted straight, then he'll play on them. He won't need to move them. If they need to be moved, he can get off, uh, try and move them on his next shot. You can see the outside of those two reds. Now that we look at this camera angle, definitely goes. So he can play on them without having to move them. see that quite clearly the outside one that's all he's played for but as he played it a little bit short well if the inside one goes then he's absolutely perfect if the outside one goes he's probably got a little bit more angle than he wanted but shouldn't cause a problem it would be a slightly harder pot and we just need to control the white back out to roughly he'd like to get the white back out to not far off where he is now but he may not be able to with this much angle not the easiest bit of queuing either, but he plays that one really yeah, nicely. He played that very well. You just see how focused he is. Really looking sharp for this event. Does appear like a man on a mission for this competition. Uh, absolutely. He's uh, got absolute perfect shape here. He can either take the, the red that he's nearest to into the, into the top centre, or he can take the red to the top right. It's the centre pot he's going for. see how he can go wrong here 
He's got plenty of margin of error for each shot. Take the red through to the left centre and just let the white drift through the gap in the yellows and the black be available into the right centre. Yeah, he's played through this really nicely, Mark Farnsworth. And this is one thing that Simon Ward will be or will have been acutely aware of before the start of this match is you can't allow Mark Farnsworth to have opportunities like this. And yes, he will do what he did in the second frame, have a good break and, and cruise through without Simon getting a shot. But that's something players are very accustomed to, especially when they play the best. What Simon can't afford to do is have a good opportunity like he did and let Mark to the table because that's what happens. It's three zip to the Englishman. A great start for Farnsworth. And it looks like the first set will be heading his way. And uh, as we take a look at the head-to-head -head between these two players, that's the that's the one they met in a major IPA tournament, five British Pro Final. Simon Ward getting the win, 8-6. Yep. Yes, uh, they would have played each other a number of times off the IPA Tour and, and in smaller events around the country, but it right, looks like their only recent meeting was in 2016, so they haven't played each other much in the last two years. Stylistically, they're both quite well suited to each other. Fairly steady players. I did see a lovely clash of styles yesterday with Jordan Shepard in particular taking on the old war horse and just never really got into his game despite how good the man from Wales is. Very flamboyant player. These two, no frills. Yeah, it's easy to say no frills with uh, a player like Mark Farnsworth because he seems to have the white under such good control that he's he's always in perfect position. It, his, his shots seem to be fairly simple. That break could have gone but a bit nicer for him though. That one is dry. The red nearly dropping in the top centre as we look at it, but stayed out. Yeah, he's got uh, he's come up dry, but he's he's left Simon a few problems here. He really wants to be red. I'm not sure if he has an opening red to go at. Oh, he has. He can go through the gap to get the red next to the black at the top of the table. And now it's going to be all about how the, the red and yellow at the bottom of the table here, how good does he develop that red? He needs to move it. He can't pot it without moving it. So he needs to find an angle on another red to get into that little cluster. Everything else goes. So a good opportunity for Simon to almost strike back here, having... Let Mark in for the next, for the last one. And take a look at Mark's reaction to the break and the frustration when one doesn't go down. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't by any means a bad break. You can see there, plenty of balls up at the top half of the table, plenty of power in from Mark Farnsworth. But inevitably, there is an element of the luck of the draw, and Simon's been a little unlucky there. Played a great shot down to develop that red, but he's not on it, I don't think. No, that's the problem with playing onto a red that's so detached from all the other reds on the table that you, you run the risk of not being on a ball after making the cannon. So he has no real aggressive option here. We may be looking for a safety option. But when Mark's in the form he's shown now, he needs to get that right, otherwise it could be the set done and dusted there and then. 30 seconds. And it's a fairly straightforward safety. He might even get the added benefit of potting that ball, but I think no. he'll be happier that it that it stays out. He's he wanted that. He was trying to cover the pocket so that Mark couldn't pot the black if he gets that far. He just wanted that red to travel. You can see from this camera angle that black still flies in, so. If Mark, but Mark doesn't have a good opening pot either. He's controlled the white nicely in that safety, but if the red goes a fraction further, he'd feel a little bit more comfortable as well. Yeah, the only real shot Mark has here, I think, is a cut into the 
the left centre pocket, the top one as we look at it here. He may he may look to take the yellow on the rail up to the top right there because it, if he misses it, he'll take the pocket and potentially cause some problems for Simon. The white might drift down and be somewhere in that little, little cluster of three yellows as well. He may be able to get into that area and hide the white at the same time as taking the pocket and gain some control in this frame. Okay, using plenty of that shot clock. Taking the one up the rail. And that's not worked out for him. You can see his annoyance there. It wasn't much close to the to the pot, but he hasn't covered the pocket and he hasn't left a good white ball either. No, Simon. That's what he's most annoyed about. Simon can pop this red that he's closest to into the left centre. He'll cannon into the red. No, he looks like he might just miss the yellow just above it. Either way, he's given himself, he's been given a good chance here to get his first frame on the board. Oh, that yellow stick into that red is going to really annoy him. Yeah, if he can't pop this, then that's, you can see, I, I don't think this goes. He's just taking a look now if he's got the angle off that ball near the corner pocket to, to disturb that red and yellow. I'm not sure he has. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. You could just see, just see Mark give Simon a glance there. When you're sat in your chair, you can't really tell how tricky it is for your opponent. So you tend to get clues from their body language. So like we look at the body language to see if, if it goes, and it must go because he's played on it. The, um, the player in the chair also does that. <laughs> he's, he only seems half convinced. Yeah, if this, if this goes, then it's very, very tight. It might just squeak in off the near jaw. Yes. Played that really well, did Simon Ward there. Looked for all the world as if that didn't go, but really nicely done. And his first frame on the board in this match. I've lost. And here we look at the pass rounds for Mark Farnsworth. We mentioned at the top of the show, he's been very good. Toby Bolt dispatched in round one. We saw him beat Gary Clark 3-0 on Free Sports yesterday, and he beat Brian Halcrow this morning. Not really being troubled so far in no, this competition. Not really, really being pushed. He's had a couple of sets that have gone tight, but he just he looks very controlled and, and really in the zone, and, and it's just flying through his matches. But this is without doubt the hardest match he's had so far against oh, Simon Ward. No question. Uh, that all three players he's played so far are qualifiers. This is the first seed he's played, and definitely, uh, without being disrespectful to the other players, it's a, definitely a jump up in the standard of opponent. Fifth frame. It is Simon's Simon break, so we mentioned how he had the opportunity to get one back off Mark's break in the last frame. He wants to consolidate now and maybe make this first set a touch more competitive than. He maybe thought it was. That black is right over the pocket, but the break is dry. Not quite sure how, but it is. <laughs> yeah, the ball's flying everywhere. Everything's nearly gone into a pocket, but not quite. This is a great opportunity for Mark to win the first set. Every single yellow goes. The only one that looks tight is is the yellow nearest this red there. If that yellow goes, then there isn't a problem on the table. He just needs to work his way around it. Yeah, good opportunity here. A reminder that the uh, it's uh, first of four frames for a set, and first of three sets will win the match. Yeah, Mark's probably going to just nudge into that yellow I just mentioned. Because if it is tight, then it will just nudge it over the middle pocket. Stay on the one to the top. There we go. I think he's OK. If that sits right on the rail, it might not pop. But I think he's just about OK and it still goes. It's amazing that you can be that close to a pocket and it might not go. But Yeah, just wants it on the jaw rather than the rail. And it, it does look like it should just about pass. We'll have to play it slowly, though. Yeah. It might be the ball he leaves to last to, to then have the black. Yeah, I think that will be possibly his last ball. He can get right behind it and drop it in. It shouldn't be a problem. 
extension. We're at the quarter-final stage now of these IPA World Championships. We will move into the semi-finals tomorrow. We're competing for a £10,000 jackpot to the winner and the title of world champion, which means an awful lot more and would mean an awful lot to the man at the table right now. Yeah, the way he's going about this, I think that yellow must drop in the middle without a too much fuss. Otherwise, he would have looked for an angle off the, the next shot to go into it, and he certainly can't do that from, from where he is now. You can see there how tight it is. I think it should just about drop, but as I say, we'll have to play it very, very slowly. It must go easier than it looks on camera because he, he, he's playing it from here, so this should be fairly comfortable. And it is. It looked a lot tighter on camera than it probably was. And from here, for two fairly routine pots for a of Mark's ability. Yeah, he's just got to avoid, he's got a little bit of angle on, on this yellow. He's just got to avoid going anywhere near the red in the middle of the table. He can screw back or use the top cushion, but that red could be a blocker if he doesn't, if he gets it too wide. 30 seconds. And he's gone through the gap. He was obviously worried about cannoning the red. And he's had a a little bit of fortune there to hit that yellow and still be on it. Yeah, I think he just held his hand up there to Simon Wood as a gesture of almost apology there. He didn't mean to hit that yellow, and he is fortunate to not only be on it, but also to pretty easily leave the black ball as well. A little bit of luck for Mark Farnsworth, which he doesn't necessarily always need, but no player's ever going to turn that down. No, always happy to have it. And that wraps up the fourth frame and indeed the first set for Mark Farnsworth. And the number one seed is on the board in the quarterfinal against Simon Ward. Good start. And uh, that's pretty much exactly what Mark Farnsworth would have been hoping for. Just 28 minutes for that first set. Relatively quick compared to some of the matches we've seen over the course of this week already. Yep. Yeah, uh, Mark will be absolutely thrilled, 4-1, uh, no fuss. Uh, but because it's set play, Simon won't have too much problems. He just needs to start again and, and try and get the second frame on the second set on the board. Oh, we'll be looking to do that in a few moments' time when we return after the break. Very warm welcome back to the Cedar Court Hotel in Bradford. Those are the set stats. It is 1 0 to the number one seed, Mark Farnsworth, in his quarterfinal matchup with Simon Ward. Stephen Jameson, Simon Webb, along with you for this one. And let's take a look at the stats. And you can see they're fairly even, but Mark just at the table, an awful lot more. Yeah, Mark's had much more of the chances. You can see Simon's had three breaks. One of them was a, a foul from a break, and one of them was a, a dry break. And both of those Mark turned into reverse dishes. He's had a, a break dish of his own. So really limiting the table time that Simon can have. Uh, be very, very clinical. You see he's potted a lot more balls because of the table time that he's had. And the foul from the break. He's number one next to that one. Simon Ward going in off, off his very first break. That was quite influential in letting Mark get the first frame of this match. It'll be Mark to break first up in the second set. And it'll be really interesting to see if Simon Ward can have himself another epic in this game because it'd be good to see Mark tested over a bit of a longer format because he's not really had to be so far. No, he hasn't been pushed yet. Every match has been fairly simple for him. But we've seen with set play that Simon doesn't need to worry about the fact that he's lost that set. He just needs to focus on winning this set. Yeah, that was a good break from Mark. That being said, two down. And, uh, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic, as in, as in any sport, with 
with set play. Yes, whilst it might be 4-1, it's only 1-0 in, in, in that same sense. That's how Simon will have to approach this second set. It doesn't matter if you win that set 4-0 or 4-3 or lose that set 4-0 or 4-3. You, you're only 1-0 down. The set score doesn't matter. Simon just will be looking to try and get more chances in this match. We will not get one in this frame, though. Mark is away on this second set and looks fairly good here to extend that lead. The yellow's all pretty open for him. Yeah, there's no problems with these yellows. The, probably the hardest ball he has is the black, but it's not really a problem. If he can get behind the black, he, he wouldn't, wouldn't expect him to miss it. So you can't see where he can go wrong with this finish. Yeah, it's a lovely break from, from Mark, and it's one of those breaks where, as a player, he'd, he'd have got up from that, watched the balls, and just been pretty satisfied with that, knowing that, realistically, this should be the frame. Yeah, he'd take this split every single time. He'd be more than happy. This is, you're just looking for a chance. You want to make a ball and, and have a chance, but for every ball to be open, have no problems and no clusters. You just need to map out your route around the table. It's all you can ask for. There's the, uh, the opponent, Simon Ward. We've not really seen an awful lot of him so far in this match. He's been very restricted by Mark. Always has been looked pretty tidy whenever he's visited, visited the table. Only one or two errors that I can really think of in that first set. The in-off off the break and a wasted chance when he overcut the yellow in the bottom pocket. But other than that, he's yep. been fairly faultless. Yeah, he's only made one really bad mistake, and that cost him a frame. He's uh, he, he tried the, the other. He took two chances to win the frame. He won, but he tried to develop a ball. It didn't go well and he's played a good safety and then won the frame next visit. So he's not done a lot wrong, it's just been limited on table time. Mark is, has been very, very clinical, taking the chances he's been given. Which I suppose actually Simon Ward won't be too fussed about to have a bit of time sat down. He's had a very long afternoon. <laughs> yeah, he's been on the go for, for quite a few hours now. I wondered how that would play into this match. But we don't really know because he hasn't had much of a chance. If yeah. Simon was getting chances and, and missing chances, you'd say that maybe the he might be getting tired, or the you know how long he's had as a gap might be might play a, play a part. But we just don't know. Yeah, if you are just joining, Simon Ward thrown straight into this one on the back of his last win. Only had about 15 minutes between the two because his game went almost the distance. Played all but one of the requisite frames to decide a winner. And that's for the second time in this competition he's gone that length of time. Mark doesn't want to be straight here. If he's straight, he can't get behind the black to make it nice and easy. You can see there he's got just enough angle to punch this. Yeah, that's quite simple yeah, for yeah. Mark. He really has made this frame look very easy. Yeah, that's what happens, Mark. is. This is why Mark is number one, is that he, he, when the balls are open and he's so clinical, very rarely makes a mistake. It's often the sign of a really good player in that they really right. don't have to play that many difficult shots. No, that's, a, that's exactly that. You know, Mark's, his cue ball control and his, his patterns, the way he sees the route to go around the table is so good that when he's on, it's just simple shot after simple shot after simple shot, and it looks easy, but it's incredibly hard to do. This is Simon's route through to the uh, to the quarterfinals. I mentioned it a couple of times that epic game he had against Mark Boyle, very first game of the day yesterday on Free Sports. What a game it was! All four hours of it, and highly entertaining it was as well. Much simpler game through in round two against JJ Four, the South African, and then Dan Davy just beaten over again the distance in the last 16. Second frame. Yeah, Simon's had a much tougher route, obviously having Mark Boyle first round, but also playing a seed in the last round. So he's been tested a lot more. He mentioned in his, his post-match interview, didn't he, after that first match, where um, he's had a couple of those draws that have been quite similar, where he's had a really highly ranked amateur in the first round of the World Championships. And he suffered with that over the last couple of years and not had a lot of luck. So 
He's, uh, he was really pleased to get the win over Mark because he knew how difficult the game that was. Mark, whilst unranked, is right up there with some people's predictions for, for having a shot of winning the tournament. Yeah, Mark is, is was, I, th I believe, second favourite for the tournament coming in. Uh, and But obviously, being a qualifier, he was always going to have a tough, potentially have a tough draw against the seed and actually it's the worst way around for the seed because the seed knows he's potentially got Mark Boyle and that's how it panned out for Simon but he was able to come through that in a, a, an absolute epic so Simon's going to play red onto the yellow because all the yellows are, are fairly simple apart from this yellow at the top but because it's an open table he can hit red first and then pop the yellow he'll be happy to make the pop but he's not got great position yeah, the pot was nicely played. He has got the the route through to the yellow just below the black spot, but those two balls there are going to be a bit of an issue for him. They probably do plant, but it's not the easiest of shots. In fact, he's reversed his plans. I didn't. I, I missed the red going in. He must have made a red at the same, same time as making a yellow. Because he, he went to play... He played red onto yellow to pot the yellow. So that's actually a, a nice bonus for him because the reds have come out much nicer than the yellows have. Please. Okay, here we go. There it is, yeah, the red just into the middle pocket. What a what a striker like that is for him. Yeah, touch of fortune. He, he probably would have been able to clear up yellows, but they were much tougher than the way the reds came out after that shot. So these reds are, are very simple for him here, or as simple as they can be in at this stage in the tournament. And we did see him use up what some might say was a, a huge chunk of one individual's luck with that winning shot over Dan Davey in the, in the last round. If you didn't see that one on the... Uh, on the coverage just before we came live on free sports it was he was snooking on the black played into it and doubled it off the other corner yeah definitely an element of luck for him what a bad way to end uh, it, it was an exciting <laughs> shot to end the match yeah um pretty uh pretty sickening for your opponent to sit there and have to watch that thinking you're going to get a great chance to take the match to a deciding frame but that's unfortunately the nature of the game and sport in general and simon has Taking these reds through very nicely. Very smooth player when he's into his action. And lovely rhythm to that one. He puts a frame on the board in the second set. Ties it up. And he'll be pleased with that. Only his second frame of the match. But let's tie things up in the second set. There we see the tables from around the Cedar Court Hotel. This is some of the live scores, and Ryan Clark and Ben Davies is going the distance into the th final set there. Neil Raybone taking on Liam Dunster, and Liam Dunster might force him to play a decider as well. Yeah, that uh, Ryan Clark and Ben Davies match, that's been going since 12 o'clock, I believe, so they're into their quite a few hours now for that match. Ben's normally a free-flowing player, so you can just see that on the corner of our screen there. Third frame, Mark yeah, say that again. One that is a very, very long match to not even be in the deciding, yeah. <laughs> the deciding set yet. Must have had quite a few very heavy frames in that one. This game relatively has has gone by very quickly. Only 43 minutes on the match clock. And we're well underway in the second set. Okay, not a good break from Mark. He's not happy with it, as you can see. He just didn't seem to catch this as cleanly as he has other breaks. Not much explosion from the pack to, at all. So a bit of a messy frame. There's it, it's going to be some tactical play in here. It's very difficult to see how either player, Simon in this case, will go for a finish. I quite often think in these situations, try and get yourself a colour set. What, if you can, the colour set you think is most dominant, and then you can start to work away from there. Extension. He does have an option to pop a red. He could look to be aggressive, but it's very tricky. So 
if he pots the red into the the bottom here, he may be able to pay, play the next red off the yellow into the centre pocket, which could open it up. He could even play that straight, but he still would have some problems in the middle of the table. It looks like he's playing the yellow into the middle. I didn't realise that yellow went, but he's still got, you can see the cluster of yellows there. There's three yellows that don't go too easily. He's probably going to need to have a couple of nudges here to open those up. Very tricky. Yeah, you can see he's just thinking very hard is Simon Ward about the way this frame is going to go. There is enough, there's enough gaps between those yellows that with pinpoint position and, and gentle cannons, he can piece this one apart, but it is going to require quite good control of the white. So he's, he's screwed himself down onto the bottom yellow. He can either take, he could also take the yellow to the left centre. The yellow in the middle of the pack, I, I don't think it goes to the bottom left. So he might take the yellow to the, uh, the furthest left now and go into the other other cluster of yellows. Yeah, you can just see there where he, I think he wants to leave the cue ball on the cushion. He might be able to take that middle yellow into the centre pocket. Perhaps that's what he's thinking. You know, he looks like he can't avoid the cannon on the red above above here, so he's controlled that really, really well. He's he's managed to hold the white off the red. The yellow he's next to now goes into the centre pocket. Now every pocket, yellow does have a pocket. The, the biggest problem he's got here when he pots this, he needs to avoid the red next to it. He's bumped it out of the way, so he can now take the yellow to the left centre. See how precise he's having to be picking this, this frame apart. This is actually a masterful break from Simon Ward. And the clearance now, as you can see, does look on. He's got a good chance of doing this. And it would be, I think, the most impressive clearance of the day so far. Yeah, when we first looked at the table, it didn't look like he had too many aggressive options on. I thought he was going to probably look to pop one and, and play a safety, but he's working his way through this, and he now looks a good favourite to win this frame. Remember as well, this is off Mark's break. Now, Mark didn't look happy with that break when it was dry. That's a very clever shot. Yeah, he just had enough angle on that previous yellow that he'd have been going away from the yellows, so he's done that to control the white a bit more. I don't think many players would have come up with that shot. I think that was quite creative from Simon there. And actually as well, he's left the black a little bit nicer for him as well. Not sure if he was intending that, but this now is routine for Simon Ward. Just drops that one in, and he's left himself a little bit more awkward on the black than he would have liked. Yeah, he's got much more angle on this than he wanted when he potted the yellow. Just double-checking where the white's going to go. Should be OK. And he is... Good play, that from Simon Ward. That's a really impressive clearance. Off Mark Farnsworth's break as well, as I alluded to just before Simon played his penultimate shot there. It was Mark's break, and Mark did look annoyed at how he broke, but we were thinking, oh, not a lot on it. He's very much still in this frame, but... Here we show you the match between Liam Dunster and Neil Raybone. They're... Uh could be heading into a deciding set. Neil currently two sets to one up in that match, but Liam is ahead in the fourth set. And we can see that Jimmy Carney has completed his win over Clint Ianson, so another one of the big favourite falls. Jimmy Carney moves into the quarterfinals. Three zip as well. Three zip as well, yeah, that's a very surprising scoreline. Jimmy is uh, more than capable, but Clint obviously starts the side of the tournament as, I think, third or fourth favourite, so a surprising result. Simon just cutting across that break a touch there, but he has yielded some fruit. Yellow is down. And indeed a red as well, so he's got a little bit of, of an option here. Yellows do perhaps look a little bit kinder. But realistically, I think he'd be fairly happy with whatever he chose here. Yeah, he's got a couple of problem areas. He's got a Two balls touching each other there. Everything else on the table is, is fairly open. So 
it's, it's how he develops those. Reds look easier to, to develop with those two. I think he was trying, you can see a little grimace on his face there. He was trying to just nudge the red then. It might still go without having to nudge it, but it looks a little bit awkward to get on. So that red, that red that I said might be a problem actually goes into the middle. So I, I don't think he was trying to cannon that red on second thoughts, having seen that it goes into the middle, because I think he's now played on it into the middle. No, it doesn't go in the middle, so he probably did need to cannon that red. I wonder if he's playing the one a little bit above it to cut it. He is. Yeah. It's a good shot, good recovery shot at least. He's, he's sort of digging a bit here. He may not have a pot on. It's difficult to see. I don't know. He can. I don't know if he can see enough of the red and yellow together here. These. If he can, he, can he see enough of that red to pot it into the the bottom left? If he can, then he can. Okay, play on the other one. It's an awful lot he can see. This looks a little tight for me. Looks like he can only just see about half ball. But he does squeeze that in. Precise queuing from Simon Ward. And all of a sudden, Everything is right in his world again. Yeah, no, and the red, I, I said that he wanted to move at the start. It does go from where he's landed, so he probably, he's got no problems now. Just needs to come back up the table for the red at the top. And he's got plenty of room to get on the black. He needs to be careful not to leave too much angle on the next pot. He's okay, he, he, he didn't want too much angle because he doesn't want to have to cannon into those yellows or have to work his way around those yellows because the white's going to go to the left-hand side. But he can screw now off the side cushion, back out for the black. So Ward, if he can bury this black, which he does with real Frame. consummation there. Will head into a 2-1 lead in this second set. Beautifully played. And for the first time in this game, Mark Farnsworth finds himself trailing in a set. And we saw the set one stats really, really far outweighing each other in terms of Mark versus Simon, but now it's a touch more close. Yeah, you can see there, Simon's now getting his break going. He had two two dry breaks that were dished on in the first frame, and now he's, he's had a couple of break dishes himself and a dry dish off Mark's break. So the breaks he's now, all we're seeing now is Mark, uh, is Simon's Good getting break. more chances Mark than Mark is, and he's, he's showing he's still in, in great form and, and taking them. So I, I feel like there's only really been one mistake in the match, and it's, uh, been going with with the opportunities up till now. So here comes the break from Mark Farnsworth. Been a bit hit and miss on the break so far. And again, he's not happy with that one either. And he's come up dry on that break. Um, A little bit unlucky to do so, but unlike his last break where the balls were very, very tight and te technical or tactical, he it looked like it set the frame up. This is a lot more open. It's very, uh, it's, it's very well known on the tour that Mark's break isn't as powerful and as strong as some of the other top players. Uh, it's amazing how, how well he does when he's quite often losing an advantage with the break. The big problem here is he wants to go yellows. He wants to go yellows, but the black and uh, red together at the top, the black will become a problem ball, and it's away from all the other yellows, which will make it 
tricky for him to get on because he will have to make a cannon. All the yellows are in the open. Look, there's one on the, the side rail which will need to be negotiated, but it isn't a problem. But the black and black and red there, I don't think there's any way he can get on that black without moving that red. If he can, it will be very fine, which would require pinpoint position onto it, which you wouldn't want to do. You can see him now, even though he's four, five, six shots away from potting the black, he's already looking at how can I get on this black. Yeah, I think you're right. He could leave the, the white ball similar to where it is now and, and try the cut, but it's going to require a very, very precise positional shot from down the bottom of the table. Yeah, I think if that is the case, if he feels he can pot the black without moving the red, then that's the yellow he'll want to do it from because you don't want the white to be travelling a long distance when you've got such a small margin of error with your positional shot. So that's, that may be why he's not potted the, red, the yellow at the top. He may be leaving that for his last ball and looking to play on the black without moving it. It does look very, very tight to be able to do that, though. He's looking for his second consecutive reverse dish here, Simon Ward, which would just give Mark something to think about because if Simon can pull this off, a 4-1 frame win in the second set, just to even things up, would really send a message, I think, to the number one. It would be the first set that Mark has lost in the tournament. He will have made his decision on the black already. If he doesn't try and move it, then he's going to play. If he doesn't try and move it early, he's going to try and play on it. I think he's just debating as to which corner he takes this yellow in, in the centre of the table. Yeah, he can take this to the long pocket past the black and play on either yellow, or he can take it into the centre, but he's got a lot more angle to be moving the white around. In fact, he's played the cannon, and it looks like he's played it beautifully. Yeah, he didn't need to cannon that out, but he had the natural angle to go into it. He didn't have a perfect angle for, for to play a simple positional shot, so he's gone into that, nudged it out, and it's come out perfectly for him. Always risky whenever you involve a double kiss, but it's, it's played out quite nicely for Simon here. The yellow at the bottom end of the table is still a problem because there are reds all around it, so getting on that yellow and back out is going to be tricky from here. Looks like he's going to try and screw straight back. And that's not gone That's not gone well. He's left himself no shot now. Yeah, he can't pop this yellow. It's difficult. I don't think he can... He can double it or... Yeah, he's just going to play a safety control. Try and... He's, what he's done with that yellow is he's blocking that pocket for, for Mark. He was hoping to, for the white to come up and be a bit closer to this red to limit Mark's options. But where that white's finished, he's, Mark's going to have a pretty good chance here. He can take this red to the left centre, go through an inch or two, and he'll have an angle on the red to the right centre to cannon into the red either off the cushion. So if he takes that in, into there, he can then take the next red into there, and it's how the white, he'll then look to get the white into the red to develop that. So come off the cushion to hit that, that red. He may, he could even move, hit the yellow as well to open that area up, but he's got an option to get into it straight away. Yeah, Mark just taking his time to analyse the table here. And there's few better players than him at doing that and just figuring out where his next seven shots will take him. So the reason he's done that is, is possibly the fact that that red that he's just played would have still been a problem for Mark. It was causing a problem for Simon, but it was also going to be a problem for Mark because the black was in the way. So there's no point going for the finish and not clearing that out the way. He could have got there, but he's able to play such a controlled safety that next time he comes to the table, we have a much better opportunity to clear up. And we saw 
Simon looking at his last frame with a, a snooker double. He's looked to do something similar there, but it hasn't quite worked out for him. Yeah, that's uh, Simon will be thinking that's frame away. There's no problems for here, Mark. He's now got a free shot. He'll develop the red that's red and yellow on the bottom left-hand side. And then from there, they're all open. So yeah, Mark's got to put the white anywhere behind the line and he's got a free shot to develop the table as he sees fit. He can put a ball, he can put his opponent's ball, he can move the black if he wanted to. So hit and two shots don't carry. So this is just a free shot and after that he'll have one shot to clear the table. So he won't be too fussed that that yellow went down because the red now for him is in a very possible position. He doesn't intend on making some more back to the table here. It is slightly different to the, the rules that some of you may be used to down down the local, but it's uh, what these players are used to. Yeah, I think a lot of people will be used to having two shots that carry through, so if you pot, they continue through, but these rules, black ball rules, you, you only get one free shot, and then after that, you need to clear up with no safety net of that second shot. It just adds a skill element to the game. Just as it looked that Simon Ward was on his way to this second set, Mark Farnsworth has sprung into life. We're already longer in this second set than we were in the first. It's not a huge surprise, that first one did fly by. Yeah, it's been, the chances have been a bit more even in this set. That's why we're seeing a little bit more time. Simon's had plenty of table time in this set and none in the first set. You can just see once once Mark managed to open up the table with his first shot, everything else becomes very simple for him. Does have a great knack of making it look very easy, doesn't he? Yeah, it makes the game look very, very simple when he's playing well. And played it with a little bit of drag just to control the white, and that will do that frame. Mark Farnsworth gets one back in the second set, 3-2 now to the Welshman, Simon Ward. Yeah, Simon had a chance there, but a cannon didn't go his way. He was trying to, well, he was trying to just squeeze through a gap of the balls, but uh, left himself no pot on and tried to play a safety, but didn't go well. One good safety from Mark, and then he was able to clear the table. And for the second time in this match, Mark has punished Simon for a for an error, really, in when Simon was well into his break. Yeah, and that's probably the key Six to this match. Simon They're both going to get chances. We've seen that with the, the way the Six. breaks have, have gone. Simon both players will get their chances. They, they may be in bunches, but it's can you capitalise when your opponent makes mistakes? And we haven't really seen Mark make a mistake yet. That's a nice big break from Simon. At least not an open table. His breaking maybe has been potentially the only issue from Mark. And don't forget, Simon was at the table there off Mark's break, so... Yeah. Simon will be pleased to be back at the table here. It was a good break. Got through them nicely. Yeah, be looking at yellows here. He's had a nice, nice split here for him to go at. The only issue may be is if this yellow here doesn't pop down the rail past that red. It looks like it does. So if that yellow goes, then he doesn't have to develop any balls. He can just work his way through the clearance. Okay. 
He's, looks like he's got enough angle here that he can, if he chooses to, he can come down. Oh, he, as we see, the, that yellow does go, so there is no problems for him. He's, looks like he just overhit that for a second, but it's pulled up just in time. It's awkward queuing, but it's, he can see enough of the centre of the white that that's OK. He can now, he'll just want to stun up a couple of inches, pop the one to the bottom left, as we can see, and then just come back up a couple of inches to leave himself the yellow below the black. And then the key to this will be how he gets himself across, how well he gets himself across to the yellows on the left-hand side. as well yeah he's got a choice here he can he can pop the one below the black or the the yellow nearest the top left pocket but if he, if he takes the yellow below the black the position onto the next ball is very tricky and if he likewise if he plays the the yellow onto the top left he's going to be going close to cannoning the red and then potentially the yellow above it so the control for the positional shot is difficult he's going to look to spin this off two cushions and it was all about avoiding that red on the right-hand side, which he's managed to do. If he's straight on this, then he should be absolutely fine. No problems if he is. Looks like he's in pretty good shape. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's probably going to go a little bit close to those two reds and have a little bit of angle on the next shot. Wow, I did not expect that. Very surprising miss from Simon. That's one thing we don't really see an awful lot of is misses an open table like that it is a bad one and it wasn't even particularly close either i think he was what he was if he was tasked with just potting that ball he wouldn't miss it he was trying to pocket off, pot it off the jaw just to hold the white a little bit straighter if he, if he makes that pot center pocket the white will go a little bit further to those reds and make the next yellow a little bit thinner he wouldn't have had a problem if that had been the case but he was just trying to pinch the pot it, pocket a little bit to make the positional shot for the next two simpler so it, it was more than just a missed pot there was he wasn't there's was a reason why yeah, it is is a tactic that poor players can adopt as the pockets a wee bit bigger and perhaps snooker for example so you can really make advantage of the size of the pockets and force angles that maybe yeah, wouldn't you, be there. You'd be surprised how much angle you can create by using the pocket. Very, very clever shot from Mark. He's played the, re played the red on the rail first, bumped it out, but knew the white was going to pot the yellow over the middle. So he's developed a bad ball as well as potting a ball. So clever shot. And now he's one good pot down the rail away from having a very open table. That's Gary Clark in the, uh, in the background there, just watching Manu dumped him out of the competition in the second round. And a good game, that one, actually, for quite a while until what really ran away with it in the third set. I think that's the thing. A lot of players are capable of spells of playing to the level that Mark is able to play at. But Mark is, is just relentless and just uh, plays at such a high level for just all the way through. So you're capable of players are capable of staying with him and capable of beating him in short, shorter matches, or even in, in this length match. But it, it, he's just always at that level. You never see very so often. You never ever see him dip in form. He's played a lovely shot there to leave himself on this red down the rail. And. Just when Simon Ward looked like he had a great opportunity to really take this set off, Mark Farnsworth. It looks like Mark is going to tie things up at three frames apiece, force a decider in the second set. Just had a fraction more angle on that pot than he wanted, and he's come up short on this positional shot as well. He's going to have to play either come off one cushion, leave himself a bit more distance, or he's going to look to pot and come round two or three cushions for the black. The black does go to both bottom pockets, so I don't anticipate a problem, but this is more work than he wanted on this red. Yeah, this is missable. But he 
dispatches it very nicely. As you mentioned, Simon, I think he would have preferred a slightly easier black, but... Yeah, he's put the white exactly where he wanted to from that red. It's the shot before meant he, he accepted he wasn't going to get any closer to the black. I think lesser players would want to get straight in on it, but he's he just gives himself a nice, comfortable shot for it from here. No mistake. And we will have a decider in the second set. Look of satisfaction from Mark Farnsworth as he ties things up in this second set. 2-0 would be a big advantage. Yeah, it's an interesting one because it goes without saying that this is an absolutely huge frame in the course of this match. But it's almost more pressure on Simon, not just because he's the player that's 1-0 down, also he's the player that was 3-1 up in this set. So at 3-1, Mark, I wouldn't say he's written off this set, but in the head he's thinking, it would be a steal if I could win this set. So he's, he's more comfortable with, a, with the thought of losing it. So there's lots more pressure on Simon for a couple of different reasons. And there we see the, the full Cedar Court Hotel set up here in Bradford. That is the full competition underway. We've got doubles and ladies fixtures on over the course of this long weekend as well. We'll head you back now to the main show table and you can see quite a crowd building for this one as well. A few of the players are anxious to see how this goes and Mark really wanted that red to drop and it didn't. A perfect view of Mark's reaction there. It's another drive break for Mark. It yeah. isn't his first in this game either. No, this, it, as I said earlier, it, Mark's break isn't as strong as some of the other players and he's uh, quite often comes up dry and just that little kiss on the yellow, wasn't it, for the red? It was on its way in. Yeah, so there's a congested area in the middle of the table that he needs to negotiate. Everything, nothing's a, a huge problem, but he, it's one of those that he had a few frames ago where it's all a bit more pinpoint than a couple of the chances we've seen in this match. You know, just trying to develop the black a little bit there off the cushion. That is his choice. Yeah, this red in the middle of the table, that's going to be the one that's most awkward for him to, to work out. He almost got a little nudge on the yellow he's next to to finish on that, that red, which would have made this much more open. But that's the red he's going to have to get onto to make this a great chance. And you see he's gone straight after it, nudged that yellow out of the way, and, and he's there now. So I should imagine he's going to pot this red to the the left centre and he's going to look to clear the two reds at the bottom of the table up and then go up for the two reds nearest the black and the key will be what position does he get off the two reds at the bottom of the table whilst going up for the, the reds near the black. Yeah, I'll take the one round the corner, swing down off the bottom cushion to himself have the second red and that's the important one, that's the one he yeah. needs the angle to have. I think he's going to look to want to come up the left hand side of the table He's going to look to come up and try and hit this yellow here off the next shot. If he can hit that line anywhere near that yellow and he'll leave himself both reds to the centre. It's the important shot in this frame. He's left himself enough an angle to do it. The pot is relatively straightforward. He shouldn't have to force the angle as we touched on in the last frame. It's there for him. Set himself up nice to hit Simon Ward. That's okay. That he had the target of the yellow. He was he was a little fortunate because he hit the left hand side of the yellow. He could have snookered himself on both reds there, but he's just slid by and now he's in pretty good shape. He's probably I'd say pretty good shape rather than perfect because he's both angles he's got on both reds. He can pop both from where he is now. If he takes the, the left, the, the one nearest the left-hand side, he's going away from the, the other one and, and vice versa. So he may look to screw off the yellow, take the bottom one and screw off the yellow back up the table just to leave himself on, on the last red. It's a sure just he's played, like that. Uh, he's played that beautifully. Played that really nicely, Simon Ward. And this now should be maybe a couple of frames later than he would have liked the second set of this match. 
and for the very first time, you see there, Mark Farnsworth taps his chair in congratulations. For the very first time, he has dropped a set in this IPA World Championship. Simon Ward has got one on the board, which is exactly what he was after. It's 1-1 in this quarterfinal. And are we about to see another Simon Ward epic? here in Bradford, I wonder. Third set is on its way next. And back we are at the Cedar Court Hotel in Bradford. One apiece, poised beautifully between Mark Farnsworth and Simon Ward. Stephen Jameson, Simon Webb, along with you for this one. Hopefully, until the bitter end here on Free Sports, I have a feeling we might be here a little while with this one. Both of them playing really nicely. This looks like it's going all the way. Uh, key stats here for me are the dry breaks. They're just starting to mount up for Mark. He uh, was dry or reverse dished off his dry break in the deciding frame of that set. So it's uh, Thank you, Simon's just getting more chances than he got in the first set, and he's he's taken enough of them to win the set. Simon Ward to break. It does just show you. We were talking a little bit off air there that realistically, Mark, in, once he's at the table, really hasn't made any real errors. He's been no, for, for me, I think Mark's played almost a flawless match to this point and it's 1-1. I can't think of an error he's made in open play. All his mistakes have come from the break. And that isn't the best break from Simon actually. That's his worst break by a little while. That is going to be dry for him. He just gives a little snarl at the table there. He didn't like that much at all. Connect, it seemed to connect really powerfully but the balls just didn't split like they usually do with him. Yeah, he didn't seem to get the explosion of the pack. And he didn't make a ball, but the balls, you can see how, how well split the balls are. They just didn't really end up near the pockets. And it's the worst possible result for Simon here because the balls are nicely split, very open. And the last player you want to let in in this scenario is Mark Farnsworth. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have any problems here. Everything goes. He's going to clear the three at the top of the table first and then come back down the table for the three nearest the black. There's no, no problem areas, everything goes. So it, Mark, what we've seen with Mark so far in this match is that he he's just hasn't made a mistake from these situations. He doesn't tend to an awful lot as well. It's quite remarkable that despite Mark's sort of almost well-documented issues with with his break, it, issues is perhaps harsh. Maybe it's his weakest point of his game it's, is, is, sa is safe to say that he is so consistently up at the top of the world rankings when you know so many of his breaks end up coming up dry and, and that sort of thing but it's because he's so good in these situations yeah it's, it's, it's breaks it's no question the breaks the weakest part of mark's game but the rest of his game is at such a extreme high level that it is incredible that he's managing to, to stay at the top of the rankings with that break he's, he's experimented around with a lot of different ways but he, he just can't find anything consistent compared to the other top players. So he's just going to pot this yellow to the left centre and drift down. I wonder if he's going to play on the one just past the black. He could play, he could play on an option of two, two here. If he can get the white into this area here, or a little bit outside that, then he'll have a choice of, of two. I think the one past the black would probably be the preference. This is where you just see the, the cogs turning in Mark's brain. Does this better than anyone else, analyzes the table. Yep. Almost run, runs it through his processing program and delivers. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. He's He probably knew exactly what he wanted to do within the first couple of seconds of, of where he's finished, but he's just confirming probably his margin of error. This is the key shot here. If he gets this shot right, the rest of it sort of takes care of itself. So just working out where he wants to be and he gets that right, it's uh, fairly plain sailing. 
And we played that one pretty much as slow as he dared. Yeah, it, it looks, like, to me, it looks a little bit awkward because it, I, I think he's, he's going to pot the one next to the black. But if he wants to come back, he wants to be fairly straight on the one to the right centre, the other to the right centre, that black it becomes a bit of a blocker to get on that one. You see that, he played that with an awful lot of right-hand side. And, and perhaps Mark's first mistake now. He's come up short. You can now see why he took that extra few seconds on the previous shot, because it was such a key shot to get perfect on, to give him the angle. Yeah, played a lot of side on that one, but in doing so, just took the power off the shot, which affected the, the momentum of the white. And he is stuck behind the black, and he's now going to take his time to process this one, because it's not necessarily hitting the yellow that's going to be his issue. It's stopping Simon from getting a shot at it. He so might well be playing the double. Oof. Just missed it. So close. Yeah. The, in that situation, with, with the way the Reds were sit, sat, it, there's just no way he could keep the, the table safe from the snooker. So he's tried to pot it and, and come up with something special out of the, the problem he had. So for me, that's his first mistake of the match. And we're in, and we're in the third set. <laughs> yeah, it's fairly impressive from Mark Farnsworth so far. Simon back at the table. He'll be pleased about that. Especially after his break, he's just tried to develop that red, and that's gone quite nicely for him. And all of a sudden, he doesn't need, doesn't look like he needs to do an awful lot else. That's a clever little shot he played there to get that red over the pocket. Yeah, he's got, he's got, doesn't need to develop anything or, or cannon anything out. He's got a couple on the rails that he just needs to be careful with. Yeah, I think he's going to end up leaving the two in the bottom of the table till last. The, the red down the rail to the bottom left, and then he's got the red in the centre above the black. They're, the, they're probably his last two balls. I think he almost tried to play the, the two in one there. Yeah, I think he did. He was it, it would make it slightly easier for him. If he had potted the, both reds in this shot, then he would have he, he would have been in, in really good position. He's still in really good position with it staying where it is now. He's on the one down the rail. But he, he would be probably marginally happier if it had gone in. So the one to the right centre now, and I think he'll then play the one down the bottom right down the rail. He's just got to be slightly careful. So he's going to take the one down the rail now. He can either screw back for the one that's right over the pocket, or he can he can play the red. The red does go past the other red, but if you cannon that red, then that red can be cannoned a little bit too high. The yellow's there as a bit of a blocker, so it should stay nicely over the pocket for him. May even pass straight by, but it just narrows the pocket for him a touch. Yeah, I think he will probably want to play it clean, and he has no problem. There's enough of a pocket there. It's a simple stun shot, leaving the black to the corner. No mistakes from here. And Simon here playing nicely. And a bit of a a dodgy break, which he wouldn't have been too pleased with, but just used the side of the pocket there to give him the angle off the cushion. And that is Simon Ward on the board in set threes. He's in the lead now for the very first time in this match, and for the very first time I can think in the competition, Mark Farnsworth is behind. So there we go with the quarterfinals. Only two more to confirm. Ryan Clark and Ben Davies. Still 2-2. Two, two. That still could go either way. Neil Rayburn and Liam Dunster still at 2-1. And now the two games that we are waiting to find out the result from. Jimmy Carney. We are eagerly awaiting the news from those results. Second frame, just hearing Mark Ben Davies has just beaten Ryan Clark by three frames, nil. three sets to two. So he'll move into the quarterfinals as we played this evening with the semis and the final coming up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. 
See how the cut break once again being employed by Mark. It's a better result for him this time. Let's take a look at that one. Yeah, got a little bit of luck with the yellow. And just let's discuss a little bit here, Simon, the, the sort of benefits, particularly for someone like Mark in playing the, the cut break, because when he doesn't necessarily have the the, Q, the exact same Q power as the as the other top players, the cut break tends to almost act as a little bit of an insurance policy for him. Well, I think with the cut break, you're getting into the second ball down. It seems to, you, you can seem to get a better split with less power, but quite often when you have a bad break with the cut break, you can get in congested table. So even though he's he's hit the second ball down and he's made the ball, you can see here he's got clusters all over the table. There's no when when you see a big front ball break, you can see a much bigger split. And in fact, he has played a uh, has played a safety shot with the second. Yeah, looks like we're in for our first real safety battle of the of the match here. Has been very free flowing so far, it must be said between Farnsworth and Ward. This is pretty much tit for tat. Yeah, it's difficult to see here how either player can gain an advantage. Both colour sets have got such big problems that it's you, you really have no way of going for a finish. I think Simon's probably going to look to just bump the yellow off the side rail and get the white roughly back down to where it is now. Neither player really wants him to commit to a colour set at this stage. Yeah, the yellows look probably the best bet but that one tied up by the black is is a horrible it's a horrible yellow really because that's difficult to get out yes yeah, this this yellow here and the black it's, it's stopping yellows being a really being a really good uh, choice of color set and both players seem happy enough to leave the other the opportunity to go for yellows reds would be a lot easier because there's reds around that black that they he can you can pop and develop the black at the same time that would all open itself up a little bit easier the reds still aren't aren't very easy so it, uh, in this situation, I think both players would probably rather take reds and then work from there, possibly not going for a finish, but neither player have had a red to go at. And it doesn't look like there will be for a moment here, unless actually there might be a, the red into the top left pocket. So we might have an angle on that. Yeah, a clever shot from Mark, because he's, he's sort of made reds worse and developed yellows whilst not leaving a yellow on. <laughs> so if he has, so it's now an, more of an even split because that, that ye yellow is now over the right centre and the red's gone up the rail. It's making more problems for reds and less for yellows. I always find for me trying to uh, have a tactical battle when you haven't got a colour set is much harder. Once you've got a colour set, you know you're trying to develop yours while keeping your opponent safe. When you haven't got that, it's much harder to do. That was quite a clever shot there by Simon. Only if he can pot a red in his next couple of shots here. Just moving the yellow to the cushion, similar to what Mark was trying to do in his last shot. He's improved the reds whilst making the yellows worse. This one will need to go there to really consolidate that shot, and that's a great shot. That really is a brilliant shot. One of the best shots of the match so far. Great pot, great position. He's got a choice now. He could play safety now, or he could just try and feather behind the red where it is now. You, he'd have to hit the cushion. You have to be careful with that. Or he could pot the red to the top and come into that area and try and open it up a bit more. There's that shot again. Lovely queuing. And it was a really important shot as well, because if he had left that over the pocket, then always good work with moving the yellow out the way and potting the last red was all in vain. 30 yeah, Simon's such an aggressive player, I fancy him to go for this, but it's still going to have some issues to deal with. I think he's, got, he's eyeing up, he's going to pot the red next to the black into the, the bottom pocket there, and that will, the angle he's got, he'll be cannoning into the black, and, and that will probably bump the other red and the yellow are all around, and it will open up those. He'll still have the two on the right, on the bottom, as we look to deal with, but it would open up the, the biggest problem he's got. He's relying on an element of luck here. This black will go on the move. Maybe on that second red. That's a great shot. It, I like the control he's played that with. Didn't try and overhit that. He's just played that enough pace to bump the red on and off, bump the black on and off. You see that both red and black have, have come out nicely. He, he's probably a little bit unfortunate. He's a bit thin on the red, but he might be able to pop 
one of the other reds off the yellow into the center. I was thinking he might be able to do that from here, but he, he probably wants to get across the right-hand side to do it, to have more control for positional for the next shot. But this is this is super tough. This is thin, awkward queuing on the yellow. He's going to be flying back and forth across the table in a moment. I yeah, feel. it's hard to, hard to control this. That was what made that last shot just so difficult in that not only was it a long pot, but just so difficult to control with multiple cannons at work. This is a very tough shot, and he knows it. Just taking his time. Yeah, there's so many elements to this. Obviously, the awkward queuing. It's a tough pot in its own right, but it's also a very tough positional shot. He's going to have a lot of movement on this white. And the yellow on the bulk line is a bit of a blocker for him. So he said a couple of times across the table. It's a great pot. He's still giving himself a chance. Yeah, he, if he's being super picky, he would have liked to have been a little bit easier on this red. But I think the first, first and foremost, you just got to make the pot and, and just sort of hope that this comes he, nice for him. He is going to use the yellow, I think, over the middle. You saw him eyeing that angle up. He is going to use the yellow, but I wonder if he's going to play the red off the red and then use the yellow. He has that option as well. Um, it depends, because it'll be difficult if it just pots the yellow. There we go. So he used the red as well. If he just potted that cushion and then yellow, it would have been difficult to get back on that red, which is why he did that. Well, that was a real billiard shot from there, from Simon Ward there. Let's just take another look at that one. It's incredible. Any touch on that yellow and that falls in. It's a great effort, but didn't fall. It's not the end of the world, this for Simon, because that red has tied Mark's yellow up there. It has, and... We've seen so far in this match, up until this set, Mark has been just super clinical from this situation. Every time he's had this a chance like this, he has made it look very, very simple. But in the last frame, he did make a mistake that he needs to uh, forget about. Obviously, the biggest problem from him, him here is going to be, has that red blocked the yellow? He's given it a good look to see whether that yellow will pass the red to the top left. I think it probably does just squeeze by, but it's a very tough shot when it's right along the rail like that. Yeah, so it's a clever shot. He's developed the yellow that's on the rail, as well as keeping Simon snookered. Would he be perhaps a little bit annoyed that the yellow's gone right to the bottom cushion? He will be a little bit frustrated with that, but it, it won't cause a problem if he gets an opening. I tell you what, that's nearly an unbelievable shot. Wow. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll still chalk it up as that for Simon that's Ward. That's a brilliant shot for Simon. He's in, in better shape that it didn't go in, because if he goes in, he's not really... Well, he may, may have just had a cut up on that red to the top left but it uh, he gives him a little bit of control in this frame yeah he was totally snookered last one couldn't see any of his reds but the referee called total snooker made that shot very very difficult playing it with a lot of side that's so difficult to judge yeah i think mark will probably be looking to try and get i don't think he's going to be aggressive here he's just going to look to try and get the white onto the bottom rail He'll be snookered on both, both reds. See, this is where the player with more balls on the table is at such an advantage. You've got so many more weapons to either play tactical with, look for a snooker, keep there's much safer areas. Now there's an up and down option perhaps here for, for Simon. He's going for the other one. And that couldn't have gone much better for him, I don't yeah, think. Simon will be thrilled with that. He's managed to get the red out, as well as keeping the yellow safe-ish, and without leaving Mark a, a very nice pot to go at. So Simon's slowly giving himself an opportunity to perhaps still take this frame. This is really impressive from Simon Ward. being put in a couple of really difficult snooker situations and got out of them brilliantly considering he's only got a couple of balls on the table to play with. The advantage really was with 
Mark and now I think it's just starting to set the other way. Yeah, he's, Mark's in a real spot of bother here. It's very difficult for him to, to pot anything. In fact, I don't think he can pot anything. And there's nowhere to really hide the white now from the balls he can see. Yeah, that, that red being out in the open really does make things nice for, for Simon. Obviously, the one out of the pocket is extremely possible from anywhere on the table. Yeah, this yellow here is the only yellow I think he can see. But by playing that yellow, there's, there's nowhere he can hide the white or put the white into to stop Simon from being able to have at least a, an awkward pot to go at. So, very difficult from here. That's as good as he could do, to be honest. He, he's accepted that Simon's going to have a, a, an opportunity to pot this red now to the top, of the top left of the table. He's almost said there, hasn't he, Mark? Well, if you pot that, you deserve to win the frame. Yeah, and Simon, it's not... You know, if he makes this pot, it's not guaranteed win either because the black is still awkward-ish. It's it goes, but it, it was not, you know, right in the open. I think the way it's not there. The way Simon played that, I think he was trying to do exactly what he did. He was trying to nudge that red over the the top left pocket. You can see where the white's finished. That had he made that, he would have had no, no shot on the next one. So yeah, I think he was focused there on getting a good white more than anything else. Yeah. So he's just trying to keep it contained. He's got, he's got Mark. Even it's, it's not. He's not too far ahead, but he's, he's hanging in there. It's a lovely pot from Mark. He's still got a long way to go in this frame, though. I think he, he's got an option here. He's got an option here to just take this yellow up to this pocket. And he, I don't think he's going to want to pot it because the yellow at the bottom of the table is blocked by the red. But if he just can drift this down, this yellow down the table, he, the white will finish somewhere near the black. And he may end up with a snooker. But worst case scenario, if Simon does have a shot of the red, he will look to take the top pocket to make Simon have no chance to clear up. 30 seconds. Well, he's gone straight for the pot. Well, he's fooled me. I thought he was going to, going to just take the pocket, but he's, he's feeling more aggressive than that. So he's now going to screw down the table into this, where the red is. He, the red's the, he, the red's a bit of a blocker. So if he can screw down the table towards that red, the red stops the white from going in off. So he can play it at a nice, comfortable pace. Stay on the yellow at the bottom of the table. It's going to be some shot. He risks uh, snookering himself on that pot as well. Yeah, it, and it, the thing is, he could if he does take this on, he could leave himself straight on the yellow at the bottom of the table. If he, can, if he plays the shot, as I said, Cannon's the, the red, there's a good chance he leaves himself straight on the yellow, which would leave him no chance of getting too close to the, the other yellow at the top of the table. Well, he's gonna, now he's, he's going to do it this shot, so he, he's waited one more shot. Yeah, he's just delayed the inevitable there. He'd rather have one tough shot on the black than two tough shots in concession yeah the, that's I think that's quite clever actually doing it off this shot than the previous shot because if he does finish straight on the yellow at the bottom of the table now yes he'll have a very tough black but he can play it at a nice pace that if he misses he could end up taking the pocket for the black but that's not not worked out very well for him he just got into that a little bit too much you could see he was trying to come down the line of the rail to so that the red would almost pop the red well, he wanted. I can, he did want to pot the red, but it's. He's left himself really awkward now. And there's his reaction, as you can see. Not a happy bunny after that shot. I and think he's left himself a long double now, so he's going to go past the red, between the black and the red, to the top pocket. This might even go in off the red. Oh, that was so close. Any flick on that red, and it goes in. But look where it's left, <laughs> yellow and red. This frame has been absolutely fascinating. Simon here may not, he might just leave that red over the pocket where it is because he, he would love to. If he can, if he, he probably can just about play the red at the bottom without potting it. He's, if he wants to be more aggressive, he can pot the red over the pocket and try and cannon into the, the red and yellow. 
You can see there that Mark's yellow completely tied up with that red. The one thing that Simon in particular has to his advantage, he's, he has the option of the skill shot with his red being on the outside. He does. He's just trying to think through. If he play, if he doesn't, so it, yeah, he's not going to pot the red now. He's just going to leave Mark a shot at the yellow, but he's... He was just trying to think through what could Mark do if he left himself there and just considering the more aggressive option, which was sort of eggs in basket, because if he didn't get it, he would lose the frame. And Simon here had the advantage of his red over the pocket, which means it's very close to the to the rails. If Mark can hit, just hit the yellow and doesn't open up this the red, so he's gone cushion first, cushion yellow, that's, that's fine. See, now, now Mark's actually in the driving seat here. Simon can't now play the red at the bottom of the table without potting it. And if he can't see the red next to the yellow, then he's got a real problem. I think he can just see the red. So he's just going to feather off it now. But he's got to be careful not to overhit this and the red bump out of the way. Actually, he might not. He might even have to swerve around this a fraction. So he, he couldn't feather off it. He had to hit it a bit firmer. He's used to being unlucky. No, he's a great shot. I don't think he's left Mark that, that yellow at all. Will Mark be perhaps... It's a, I mean, it's a one it's a one cushion snooker and it's it's a hit and pot scenario almost for for Mark it. If he gets the right side of it, he's got the option almost of going of giving himself a slightly more angle as well because you can you could potentially go cushion first onto the yellow off the off the top yeah, cushion. Yeah, when the yellow's near the near the cushion it does give him a bit bit of a bigger target. There's a very good chance he'll pot this. Simon knew that when he played that shot, but this is as good as Simon could have done. He's left it by the cushion. This isn't an easy shot. He's that's brilliant. That's brilliant. The reason that's so brilliant is the fact that he had to actually jack the cue up to screw into the side cushion to be able to arc the, the cue ball round to get that. Just see there a wry smile on Simon Ward's face. That's a brilliant shot. Did indeed use the cushion. And the black sitting over the pocket almost feels like <laughs> the, the pool gods rewarding him for, for a brilliant shot there. That's the way that ended up. Over 20 minutes on that frame. Oh, what a brilliant frame it was. Terrific action. Really tactical. But after all of that, you can see there we've played more in two frames at the start of this third set than we did for the entirety of the first. This is this has been brilliant to watch because this is the first time we've really seen Mark drag down into a into a pattern of play like this and he's yeah. just got the better. They're just having a little yeah. little chat between the pair of them. Yeah, up till now they've well they're just trying to work out whose whose break it is actually. But uh, up till now it's been sort of plain sailing for Mark in terms of every time he's come to the table he's 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 been clinical and taken out his chances. He lost the second set. He didn't do anything wrong. He just didn't get as many chances as Simon. But that's the first time we've sort of seen a, a tactical battle that could have gone either way. Fascinating to see. Simon here gets a couple down. Just take a look at Mark's reaction there. He was almost up on his feet when the white entered the jaws of the pocket. Very, very close. White was flying around everywhere. Didn't get a, a kick or a cannon off anything. And very nearly ended up in a nightmare scenario for Simon there. Now Simon's looking at yellow, surely. Yeah, yellows are, it would be his option, but he's having a good look now to see whether he can see the yellow to the, the top. He he's want, possibly could play this yellow here if he can see past it, and may, maybe play the plant, or he may decide to take the yellows at the bottom. The reason he may take the yellow, yellows at the bottom is he could play this yellow onto there as well, which makes that's probably the worst yellow for him is, is the yellow on the rail. It just stuns that one in. And he's got the option to play that shot now if he wants to. I just wonder if the, if the yellow that's next to the red by the top bucket will go past that red. Yeah, I think that might be what he was looking at right at the very start. So if he's already identified that he's going to play the plant yellow onto yellow down the rail, does that yellow go?
that was very tough. He needed to get more side on that to get around and avoid those reds. The reason he, he wanted, he, the first shot he wanted to stun across the table a fraction more to make that shot a lot easier, but he uh, wasn't able to do it. I think the, the outer yellow next to the red doesn't go straight in. I think you would have to play a plant with it, but that option now is obviously very much out the window for Simon Ward here. It's critical from here that he doesn't foul. That red at the top looks tricky. I'm not sure if it goes past the yellow. So as long as he doesn't foul, there'll be plenty of work for Mark to do. Oh, he might even oh, get unlucky. Wow. Oh, oh, he might Mario. even get unlucky. <laughs> How is your luck? He can't believe it, Simon Ward. Just for a split second there, it looked like he done exactly what he intended. And just as that red came back out, yeah, he I think might not even be able to get out of this, you know. Yeah, he, I think he may have to play off the jaws here. He may have to do jaws with the corner pocket. He may may have be able to go past the red just to hit the... Yeah, so he can. He can just hit the side rail, and he can. he's trying to hit the yellow nearest his hand. And he wants to hit it firm. To, he wants to half a chance to try and make it into the top corner that it's gone towards, but it's not, not worked out for him. It's about as good as he could have left the white as well. That's unfortunate for Simon Ward. He very, very nearly got himself out of trouble. Mark here has some options. Look into the middle pocket. First initially. And this is where he can be so dangerous. All these reds look all of a sudden pretty straightforward. Yeah, we've seen from Mark in this match so far that when he's finished like this, he's not made many mistakes. He hasn't made any mistakes from these situations. So, so clinical. He'll leave the red nearest the black till last now. He'll pot the four at the top. Leave the, uh, get the red, the white somewhere where it is now. Pot that red in a simple position for the black. Looks like he'll, he's got an option to take the red into the bottom middle as we look and screw the white to the top rail, the right-hand side rail as we look, or he could take the one to the top right. Slightly trickier position if he goes this way. He needs to just come. Absolutely perfect position here. It should be relatively straightforward from here for Mark Farnsworth, he's actually going to take the bottom red on. Yeah, I, I think this is a change of plan. I don't think that would have been as he originally wanted to, but probably felt he was going away from the, the reds. If he take, took the one to the centre, he would have been just going away from the other one and would have been more work on the position of the next shot. So It's a lovely shot, actually, to leave himself there because he can just leave the white where it is now and roll down off the one over the middle pocket. Yeah, and it, these are the, this is the situation you, you end up slightly off you know, position and you can then reroute and change and the, everything's open and it's, it, you can see it, it's so easy for him to do that. And this is as simple a finish as you could ever wish to have. Mark Farnsworth will take the frame and it's a good frame for him to win as well. See, quite a few of our players having a bit of a break after a very lengthy afternoon session for quite a few of them. A few of our games going the distance and what feels like then some. And here's the stats as it stands. It is 2-1 in frames to Mark Farnsworth. He's back ahead in this one. But take a look at the total balls potted. Very, very close. Very even, yeah. You see that he's, uh, Mark's won more frames than, than Simon, and that's down to a bit more of a one-sided first set. It's interesting, actually, because it just shows that Simon Ward's had chances in the, in the frames that Mark's won. Fourth frame. 
you know, he's, he's, lo he's lost three more frames in total, but he's potted pretty much the same amount of balls. Yes, that's it. yeah, exactly. That's that's it. He's potting balls in frames he's not winning. Whereas every time Mark comes to the table, he seems to be potting. He clears clears the table, so that's probably why it's fairly even, but three frames different. Sure as well, that Simon's pretty much having to clear up every time he comes to the table to to win a frame, and Mark's there. Breaking again at the four here, and it's very much dry. He's not happy with it. White nearly went down as well. Yeah, it's another dry break for, for Mark. And as we've seen with his break, because it's not quite as powerful, even with a cut break, he's just got a much more congested table. I think reds are his option here. The key will be, can he, what can he do with the red nearest the triangle area? That's the only real problem ball. It does go to the bottom right. Yep. Yeah, that's the one, isn't it? Yeah, just that red there. That's probably the only one that's that's causing a problem for him at the moment. It's not a major problem because it does go to the bottom right. But he's just got to put himself at the mercy of the yellows that surround it, really. Yeah, he's just got to be careful getting in. It's not just getting on it, because you can get onto it now. It's a case of what you do, when, if it's what, what angle can you get on it to afterwards to get back onto the next red. So just that's probably the key to this visit. And he is on that red now. He has got the option of another, maybe even another as well. He doesn't have to take this now. Yeah, it's as I said that he's got he's on that red, but it's a little bit of an awkward angle. It's difficult to if he rolls through, he's going to cannon the yellow just below it. If he comes backwards, he's got the yellows in the way, and he's got some issues. He may decide to go for a different red first and come back to it. He may now he's had that cannon as well. He may now have opened that red up to the centre pocket, so he may come back down to it from another angle. He almost wants to be below that red, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that red goes into the left middle pocket or not. Yeah, that's just one puzzle to solve. The yellows. If Mark does get to the table, he's going to have a very fun time navigating those yellows. Yeah, they look the tricky. He'll, ju he'll just be happy to get back to the table. You can see there, it does go up into the left middle, which also gives him another option. Yeah, that makes this a lot, lot easier for him now. He can play on it now if he wants to. So that cannon he played, a couple of shots go, opened up that red, even though he didn't immediately pot it. He's got an angle up to the middle of the pocket. We we'll just want to not hit the black here. That's the only thing he's got to be careful of. Yeah, just avoid, just wants to go past the black. The black does go down to the, the bottom right, so we can just top through now past the black. Nicely yeah, done. And he has got almost a little bit of a... He, he's got to decide here where he wants to finish the black off. He's got a few options. Yeah, I think if he can just take the... He can just take the red to the corner, the, the bottom right corner as we look now. And then when he pots, well, he's going to go a different way. That's I, I was thinking he'd take the, the red to the, the bottom right corner and then just dri drift down past the black. But he's going to go the other way. So the black's going to come down, down to the bottom right corner. And he's absolutely perfect on this. Just needs to pot it, roll through six inches, and he'll be straight on the black to the corner. Shouldn't have any problems from there. Well, Use the cushion. Looks like it's going to be another reverse dish for Simon Ward. Not the first one of this game either. Mark Farnsworth has been absolutely superb when he's at the table, but his very first shot of the visit, the break, has been his undoing in this one again as Simon Ward comes back in this point in the last frame. And reels one off there. And I'll just remind you of the very first round, this is what we're looking at here. 
There was a couple of surprises as well. Quite a few games went all the way as well. Yeah, the, the, the result that stands out for me is is the 2015 world champion losing 3-1 in his first round match against Brian Halcrow. Brian's a fantastic player, but Jack would have been expected to come through that one and try and lift the title again. So disappointing result for him. You can see there Mark Boyle and Simon Ward's epic battle in the middle there. has gone down there for Simon Ward so he's having far more success on the breaks yeah I really do feel like that's the key stat at the moment we in the first set Mark was getting the chances but ever since that first set the chances seem to be coming much more Simon's way because of the break he's looking at yellows I think the yellow the red and yellow at the top of the table here the red is blocked, which to me suggests, and there's no reds near it, which would suggest to me that he wants to go yellows because that yellow can still be potted. Possibly now, but if not, he can come back for it. And he can pot it now, so yellows are definitely his option. So there, there are no clusters of yellows or problem yellows. I think that yellow must go between that yellow and red into the bottom corner. Yeah, he's had a good look at it, so it's probably tight. I mean, it must be tight because I'm having another look now. And he's going to take it on. And it doesn't quite squeeze through. Do just wonder if he if he could see the full potting angle of that one or, or whether he, it was just a straight miss. I think he did have a little bit more than he played with. Yeah, I think he definitely didn't have the full pocket. I think that was blocking the, the jaw, but it's still a surprising miss. And there has been a couple of those from Simon Ward. Whilst I mentioned Mark's been pretty much faultless while he's been down at the table in a visit, Simon has had a couple of shots where he'll be furious to have missed the, the pots that he's played. Yeah, for me, I don't think Mark's missed a pot yet today. The only mistake I, I really remember him making is a positional error where he snooked himself. But apart from that, so it, it's just Simon has missed three or four more pots. But he's okay. He's not the end of the world here for for Simon because Mark's got a really tricky table here. But he missed that pot, but he's he's taken the pocket with it, and he's also got a yellow over the right centre pocket that's acting as a blocker. So Mark can play the red in the centre of the table there. He can play that off the yellow, which will open up that pocket for another red. He may, it depends how easy it is to do, he may even try and play this with a bit of pace to try and send that yellow down to open the pocket at the bottom. I'm not sure if that shot on, that shot's on, and it, it probably wasn't. He might potentially look at a skill shot as well to, to get that yellow at the bottom right pocket where he can pop both his red and the yellow that covers it. Yeah, I think you're a right. A couple of balls along that cushion. Yeah, he's, he's got an option in a, in a minute to... He's got an option in a minute to, to play red onto yellow as a skill shot. And as long as the red follows it in, it will be a legal shot. 30 seconds. If he chooses not to do that, then he's going to have to either look to develop that red somehow, get it out in the open a bit more. So that's the shot he may well be taking on here. I think he's going to try and cannon into that area now. I think that's the plan. Uh, perhaps not. It's probably a little bit too far to the left. So he probably or maybe just pot this red, come down the left hand or the centre of the table. I mentioned earlier on how players, once they're sat down, can really only tell what's going on by their opponent's body language. Mark seems to remain exactly the same, no matter what he's looking at. Always a picture, always seemingly a picture of concentration slash frustration. Yeah, he always looks very, very focused, doesn't he? He's a... Uh, he has played the shot I talked about. 
tried to develop that red off that shot. I thought he was just a little bit too thin and too far to the left, but he was able to, to make the pot and do that, but hasn't got the cannon he wanted or potted the yellow over the pocket. So he, he can come back out for the skill shot that we talked about a few minutes ago. Or he could screw back into that area, or he could play he could play a plant red onto red. Red onto red and get the white coming back up towards the, the other red. 30 seconds. It might be his option because if he can get the white ball pretty close to the red, that's nearest the right cushion. Then the option up to the top might not be the worst idea. Okay, so he's he's now going to play a cannon on that red. So he's rather than trying to do it off that shot, he's now going to play the cannon. Use the one over the pocket. He's going to spin the white over to the other side of the table and cannon the red out. It'd be interesting to see what pace he plays this as. Uh, he only needs to just cannon it nicely to get it out. But if he cannons it four ball, it could go towards the black and be the centre and top corner pockets could be blocked. Ideally, he'd like to catch this, come two cushions. Oh, he's playing a double. OK, didn't see this shot. This is why Mark Farnsworth really is regarded as number one. He just sees stuff that you don't even think about. It's a brilliant shot from Mark Farnsworth. And yeah. we th we, I, we, I think we were both thinking that positional shot did seem a little strange. But he's done that very much deliberately. Yeah, he would have played for that two two shots ago when he didn't get the cannon when he came down the table. He would have been thinking about that. Absolutely brilliant. The red being over the pocket gave him a little bit mar more margin of error for the double. Didn't have, to, wouldn't have to make it as clean as if it was an open pocket, which is why he played it the way he did. His uh, great vision and, and fantastic execution. And this game has now passed the two-hour mark. And it is very, very even. Mark Farnsworth marginally in front, three frames to two in this crucial third set. And what a game we have on our hands here. He's been made to work very, very hard by Simon Ward so far. As we return to some of the results that we saw earlier on in the competition. This is page two of the last 64, which is the first round proper. The standout results from there as well. Yeah, for me, Gareth Hibbert, the 2016 world champion, losing to Ryan Clark was the, probably the biggest shot from this side of the draw. Also, Jordan Shepard losing, not necessarily losing because Lee Clough's a fantastic player, but the fact that he lost 3 0. Of course, we saw that on the, the screens here. Yeah, it was a great game. And 3 0 was a, a touch harsh on, on Jordan, I felt, in, just in terms of scoreline in that match. But uh, hugely entertaining with the, I think we mentioned it earlier, the, the clash of styles between the pair was, frame, was great entertainment. Mark to break, leading three frames to two. Time running. So here we see Mark's break from a slightly different angle. Just see there again, quite sticky. Yeah. And it just does beg the question, doesn't it, Simon? If, if if Mark had, for example, Simon Ward's break power, I think we'd be looking at an entirely different match. Yeah, absolutely. Mark's just not making mistakes, but the break is just keeping Simon in this match. He's getting more chances. You can see with Mark's break, you can, you can tell he doesn't break as powerfully because of the layout he leaves afterwards. You can see he's got two clusters on the table of balls that are just, the, the, and you, a, a big telltale sign is always that the black hasn't moved from it. You can see where the black spot is there. The black hasn't moved at all. There's just no power through the pack. That's a, quite a nice shot, I think, from Simon Ward. Yeah, he's he's just looking a little bit fine. Yeah, he's finished a bit awkward there, I believe. He's a little thin on this. I don't know if he's got a full pocket to pop this now. And we can see there he's got about half a pocket to pop this yellow in. He was trying to cannon that yellow out. He was just trying to... He can do it again now. He's going to try... If he can get enough check on this, to go into the 
you know, he, he couldn't, he was too, he was too wide. I thought he might be able to get some, enough side on that to get into that yellow and black, because that's his problem ball. He may look to do that again in a couple of shots time. Those two yellows not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah, it's difficult to get an angle on another yellow to get into those two, in, into the red and the two reds and the yellow and the black. He, if he could have done, he, he'd like to get high on the yellow to the right middle, but I think he's too straight on this. Oh, I see how much, see why he's really put a lot of power into that to create a wider angle to punch up the table. And now he's got a, an opportunity to cannon into that black and yellow from this yellow at the top. It, it may be a fraction straight. That flick on the red has just kicked the white to the left-hand side. If he catches that red full ball, he can do it easily. Yeah, it looks like a little. He's a little bit straight. He was he was trying to leave an angle on that so that he could power into the the red and the reds, yellow and black. But you can see he's a he's a little bit too straight on this to be able to do this. Tried to, he tried to do it delicately, but it's not happened. He really tried to punch that in with lots of spin to get it across there, but it didn't happen. I'm just wondering, can he potentially force the angle off that top yellow at the bottom, just to come off the side cushion into the bottom of that pack? Yes. I think he can get the top top yellow and screw back into them. This will be the third or fourth time he's attempted to do that. No, he's decided to pull back and play a safety. I think that decision from Simon there, just he, he knows that Mark at some point will have to play those reds. I think he's almost just elected for Mark to break it up for him. Yeah, I think he's got a bit, bit of control in his frame. If the more balls you pot in those situations, the more you're handing an advantage over to your opponent if you don't clear up. So he's taken a pocket where there's a red nearby. He hasn't left an easy pot on for Mark. He's left a couple of options at the top. But Mark will be looking for another safety here. I suspect Mark will look to play... I was about to say he's already down to cue a, a different red than I was thinking he'd play. It's just tying that yellow up even more. He's got a total snooker this time. Total snooker. Which is quite clever as well, because the only balls that Simon can really hit are off the top cushion and are over the pocket, so if he hits them, he's likely to pop them, which has yeah. Mark even more of an advantage. Yeah, he'll be thrilled if, if uh, Simon comes off the a cushion here and manages to pot a yellow and doesn't get on another yellow with an angle to clear to go into that red, and, uh, red cluster of red, black and yellow. 30 seconds. He's not left him high enough up to even consider going into so he's going to go off the jaws here very very good shot that's a fantastic bit of technique from Simon Ward there played it with side almost just, just to stick it to that bottom cushion yeah it's, a sh it's always a shot that's on if, if you hit the inside jaw, it will go two jaws and, go, and tend to hug across that top rail. So you can actually play it with quite a bit of control, as you saw there. It, it's not a last resort hit and hope shot. That's a very controlled shot. And the way the yellow cannon back out again, just blocking the top of the table, means that uh, Mark then has to move that red, which was frustrating, Simon. Yeah, he's got another total snooker. Mark's still in control, even though Simon has the pocket. You'd probably still rather want to be Reds in this situation. Could he potentially even just look to play exactly the same shot again and try and take the frame out? The problem is, there's, there's no point... I mean, he's... It's the red and black together that's been a problem all the way through this frame. It, it looks like he's going to try and disturb them. Yeah, that's a better choice of shot for Simon because because he's got the. Oh, they, I'm wondering if he wasn't total snooker. Just the way they looked, just the way Simon looked at him then. No, he was okay. Yeah, because Simon's got the bottom, the top left pocket as we look, sort of blocking Mark's reds. He tried to get the black and red open so that it puts more pressure on Mark. 
because Simon's got that pocket there, he was he, he was trying to just open up the red and black, uh, the yellow and black, which puts more pressure on Mark to to come up with something. Just going back to what you said there about being totally snooky, that does mean that the the rule that you have to hit a cushion with a ball does go out the window, which is why he had the option to rest into the middle there, didn't have to break a ball out to then hit a cushion. Of course, if he could have slightly seen the yellow, he then has to play the yellow off a cushion. Yeah, to avoid the foul. So, Simon, uh, so Simon's put Mark on under quite a bit of pressure on this next shot because if he leaves Simon a look at a yellow here, he will be able to go for a finish. And that is a fantastic pop. It really is. He played it with an element of safety. He, the whites, where he played it, he's probably almost frustrated he made this. Because he has got the white exactly where he wanted it. And it's not the easiest position to just leave the ball up there. No, he's got an option to play the red on the left-hand side, come off the side cushion and try and get the white back to where it is now. Or he may be able to play the red he's nearest to. The, the problem is he's got to hit a cushion after contact. please the second reds there he may just even try and start behind it yeah if he could play if I think if he could have played the red he's nearest to as a just a stun shot behind it then he, he would have, I think the angle he had on it was probably going to catch the red so and then it would have opened them up he doesn't look too happy with that shot I just wonder if he's he has left, left a way through he's left the gap and that's a little bit careless it's a fairly natural shot for Simon here. He can just play this at a nice, gentle pace. He can play on the yellow just below the back, or just above the black. And he's now got an option of both yellows. And he knew it straight away, Mark Farnsworth. Yellow is good. And now that yellow, which he had to spend the large proportion of this frame trying to free will at last go into this middle pocket black now is pretty routine and we're going to a deciding frame in the third set these two are giving us such a close game yeah mark had that frame once simon missed even though he had the pocket Mark would have felt like that was his frame to lose. He thought it was only a matter of time before he extracted an error from Simon, but a couple of clever shots from Simon and he was able to get a mistake from Mark. And here we, as we continue our look through the tournament, I'll look back, this is the last 32, round two of the competition. This was, again, some very, very close games, not least Ron McCarthy and Andy Blurton. And Dan Davey, Michael Rhodes was a terrific match as well. Yeah, caught your eye there. Yeah, definitely the Andy Blurton, Rona McCarthy match. An absolute epic that was played in the outer arena. Went all the way to a deciding frame of the deciding set that lasted about 45 minutes and was finished with a really bad bit of run for Rona McCarthy, who played a brilliant skill shot and unfortunately went in off at the same time, leaving Andy the chance for the match. Is going to go down pretty handily and full ball into the pocket. And you just see there the contrast between Simon Ward's break and Mark Farnsworth. So much more open, just automatically off the off the break. Yeah, so Simon's got a choice here. He could go either way. I first thought he'd go yellows, but I'm wondering whether he's now going to play the red off the yellow. No, he's going to go yellows. All the yellows are, are they're all more open. I just thought he might play the first red off the uh, yellow over the left centre, and then the reds are fairly open as well. That's the advantage of having the, the break that he did. He, neither colour was particularly a bad option there. No, exactly. And you can see the difference between his break. The, the, the table that's left after his break is much more wide open and spread, and there's less clusters, whereas Mark's breaks seem to leave, be leaving clusters and, and, and little pockets of balls and problems all over the table for whichever player is at the table. The only ball that's slightly awkward for Simon, and you just saw him pointing his cue, it's the yellow nearest the left centre. 
it's not the, the hardest to get on. You can see he's probably trying to cannon the red there. It's not the hardest to get on because he can pot it from here, but it's what would he leave? Because it's hard, you know, he has to be careful not to cannon the red after he's potted the, the yellow and, and he could finish with an awkward angle. He's probably quite pleased. He's, he's got quite high at the table, though. Should avoid this red and get yeah. onto the one near the black spot. He, he definitely was trying to cannon that red. Just It just clears that out of the way completely and takes any, any issue out of it away. That's a, that's a much better shot than it looked. Played that one an awful, awful lot of right-hand sides. So when it hits the second cushion, it checks up the left-hand side of the table rather than coming around to the right to keep him on this one. So the key now will be getting from these two at the bottom of the table to the yellow at the top. Looks like if, if he can screw straight back past the yellow, that's not too bad. It's probably not as played, but he's not too bad. I think he can play this yellow to the bottom right and just control the white in the middle of the table. If he's got too much angle on it, then he's going to have to come round a couple of cushions, which is OK because he's got a line, but it would be not guaranteed. This, uh, he, this, set, this frame's so important as well in the context of this match. I actually think he may be able to just cannon into the red next to the yellow. Yeah, there we go. Control it off that red. The reason he stopped in his tracks is that red has covered the pocket he was going to pot the black in. I just wonder if the black passes <coughs> this set, this red. Yeah, so this black doesn't look like it pops to this bottom pocket there, and that would be the one he would want to get on it. It's this... This red was cannoned over this pocket, which is where the black would have been going a second ago. So he's got some problems to get on this black, even though the black is looks wide open. Yeah, he could come off a couple of cushions to get back around it, but there's so many reds in the way. It's a tough shot. That's what he's played. Oh, he's going to be thrilled with this. Great shot. A little nudge on that red, so an element of fortune in that shot. We're absolutely thrilled. If he was being picky, the only thing he'll be annoyed at is the angle he's left himself isn't the easiest. No, but I think the, the, that was such a tough shot to get there that yeah. he'll be happy. It is, it's still a tough pot, though. Yeah, this is no gimme for Simon Ward, but this will put him into a lead. A crucial frame. And he gets it. Doesn't have to worry about the red. Black is down. And that is a crucial victory in the third set. And for the very first time in the competition, the number one seed is behind in sets. It is 2-1 to the man seeding number eight, Simon Ward. He takes that one. Crucial victory in the third set. And if Mark Farnsworth is to win, he's going to have to go the distance. Yeah, Mark's going to have to regroup now. He made a, a couple more mistakes in that set than previous sets. And we will see if Mark can make his way back into this game or if Simon Ward is going to put out the tournament favourite. The all-important fourth set is coming up after the break. Welcome back to the Cedar Court Hotel in Bradford 2018 IPA World Pool Championships. And we've got a great game on our hands here between Mark Farnsworth and Simon Ward. We are into the fourth set. Take a look at how lengthy that third one was. Well over an hour to decide the winner of that one. My four frames to three, which was Simon Ward. And two of our three frames have gone the distance. Yeah. It's been exciting stuff so far. Simon's managed to turn this match around a little bit by winning the last two sets when Mark was absolutely flying. So Mark now needs to do the same and see if he can take this set to take it into a decider. Now, I think Mark got one down there right off the, the very first movement of the balls he did. 
looks all together a little bit more well as, as happy as mark farnsworth ever looks yeah the red went straight down off the corner there yeah and and this is the key for mark he he's been getting in the last in the first set he got more chances since then the chances the majority of the chances are going simon's way he's arguably needing more chances than mark because mark's playing probably at a slightly higher level in terms of he has made less mistakes but seconds. he's getting less chances so this is what he needs to get back in the match his, his balls Seven. off the break yeah, Mark's break has really been the one thing that's let him down. As soon as he's into the open table, he's really looked very, very good. And he'll probably be looking at yellows here, I'd imagine. Here. Yeah, he's looking at yellows, but he does have a problem here. That, that may go down the rail past the red. If it doesn't, then he needs to either cannon it and develop it. The other yellows aren't really a problem. Everything goes. But it does, it does have a couple near rails that he'll have to develop. He's going to go reds. Just to fool us. Well, those two reds, just from this main angle, do look like they plant into the top corner. Oh, yeah, right as we look at it now from this top view. Yeah, I think he'd be looking at it. I don't think he's going to play to move in. He could screw into them now. He's got the, the red to the bottom left and he could screw into them, but I think he's going to play on a plant with them. If he gets right behind it, it's it's very 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 controllable and it'd be a big surprise for him to miss it actually a, i wouldn't say a bigger problem but the red at the bottom of the table the furthest left of, as we look now he needs to go down to that part of the table with it and then he has to have a good angle to come back up the table for either another red or the black mm, he's going to take the plants on gets it quite nicely a little bit stuck on that yellow which will annoy him i think a touch just because it just makes real good queuing for his next shot yeah, he, and he would have liked the red that he hit to make the plant to have stayed a little bit straighter so that he could have probably played that as his next shot. But it's gone further away, which makes the control of the white. He's going to be running up towards the top right corner pocket. If he decides to... T he's, actually got, he's actually finished in a really tricky position. If he, if he takes the one in the middle of the table, he's got really awkward queuing over the yellow with a tricky positional shot. And this is a tough pot as well. That yellow might come into play. And he does well to get around it. Can he get himself on the bottom cushion? He can just about, I think. That's as perfect as he could have hoped for. That's He wouldn't have picked it up and put it with his hand any better than that. He's going to have just enough angle on this. Well, maybe he would have maybe wanted an extra inch, but it's, it's so nice. He can just drop this in and he can come up the table quite comfortably. Yeah, lovely stuff there. It's still going to be a tricky positional shot to get good position on the black. If he it, he could take the red to the top left and screw down for the red in the middle, but it he looks like he's going to take the red to the corner. But he needs to leave a good angle on this red to be able to get onto the black nicely. He's left plenty of angle. And this is how devastating Mark Farnsworth can be when he gets away off the break. Yeah. He's just got to be careful not that he's going to... White's going to be sending the white close to the centre middle pocket. He's come up quite a bit short of perfect. This is a tricky black. Yeah, not the easiest pot to win a frame, but it's one that he will feel he should make. And he does. Nicely done from Mark Farnsworth. And he does indeed take the first frame of our fourth set. A reminder, we do go off air here on Free Sports at 7 o'clock. You can continue watching the action. We won't be going anywhere. We'll be moving over to Premier Sports HD 428 on your sky boxes and the IPA Pool YouTube channel as well. So if you do want to stick with us with this game, and we both highly recommend that you do because we feel we could be going for a little while yet. And it's been fantastic entertainment. Yeah, this Premier is Sports HD is free on Sky 428. And if you can't get there, we are also on the IPA Pool YouTube channel from 7 o'clock as well. Second frame. Yeah, this is brewing Sign up into a break. fantastic finish. One frame, one frame to nil. Time running. Simon Ward will certainly sleep well tonight. That's the least we can say at this stage. Already been involved in one epic today. It looks like we're on for another one. He's 
pretty happy with that, I think. Yeah, he's made a ball, so he keeps control of the table. That's all he can ask for. Yeah, they're just going in the centre-left pocket there. And the balls are quite curiously arranged, actually. They seem to have almost travelled in pairs around the table, particularly at the top. Yeah, it's a difficult one, this. It, we've said, I've said earlier on that Simon seems to be leaving himself much better chances after the break. This isn't the case. This is slightly trickier. But I, th I, I, don't, I still don't think he needs to play any cannons or has any problems to, to negotiate. The only thing I can, I can see is if that red doesn't go through the gap, then he, he'll need to negotiate taking the other three in the correct order. If he can get the, on the one on the side rail first, once he's cleared these three at the top, then it should, uh, if he gets straight on that, then it will open up nicely for him. Giving himself plenty of options here as well is, is Simon. Just going to drop that one in. Didn't want to be straight. I think he's left himself absolutely straight on this, which is not ideal. He wanted just enough angle that he could have screwed back to the side rail somewhere near the centre pocket. And he's, he's looking a little bit frustrated. He is indeed. I just wonder if he can maybe take one of the balls at the bottom a little early, but I don't think he's considering it. No, I think I think his option here is it looks like he's gearing up to try and pinch the pocket and maybe power power through to get closer to it, but it, he could he may just have to accept the fact that he's going to have to play the next shot from distance, which is what he's done. You see, he couldn't get close to the next red, but he's still in a situation. If this red goes in, then it's all there for him. There you see, the middle one does go. It's just very precise from that sort of range. Yeah, I think he would rather have been on the one down the rail because if he get if he's on that straight, then it's really it's much simpler for him. It's a great shot. That was an easier pot than the one down the rail would have been, but now he has to play a really good positional shot. Whereas if he's on the one down the rail straight, he can just drop it in. And the other, the red he's just played will go to the right center, leaving simple position for the, the last red and the black. So this is a much trickier positional shot. But he's negotiated that really, really well. He's played that beautifully, hasn't he? Really, really good from Simon Ward. That just gave himself his own issue, really, towards the top of the table by leaving himself straight. The one ball he didn't want to be straight on, but. That is beautifully done. Welshman, who looks like he's going to tie things up in this set once again. And he does. Beautifully done. So, back to back break dishes to start this set. One from each player. And we do now have all of our quarter final lineups. That is how the state of play stands as we move into the latter stages of these World Championships. This one may well go to a 3-2 finish. It would not surprise us. Neil Raybone versus Jimmy Carney, John McAllister versus Lee Clough, and Ben Davies versus Christian Phillips are the other three quarterfinals. What takes your fancy there, Simon? Oh, I like the look of the all-Welsh battle at the bottom. A uh, little bit of extra spice there. They play out the Ben plays out of Christian's club. Ben will be uh, a pretty decent favourite in that match, uh, but uh, Christian's just knocked out the world champion, so he'll be fancying his chances as well. Lee Clough as well making the quarterfinals. We saw his first round game against Jordan Shepherd, where he did look very good. He's had a couple of years out of the game, but he's, uh, he's returning with a vengeance. Is the one that's described as the tower on the tour. And I think he's the last remaining qualifier in the event as well. Last year we had more qualifiers at this stage of the tournament. So 
that one is a, it's an interesting break from from Mark again one down which I'll be pleased about yeah Reds aren't they look a little bit worse than they probably are here oh we might have been unfortunate here definitely look worse now yeah well I'm just trying to get some reaction off his his face there to see if he's still on this ball in the middle and I think he probably is because he didn't show too much emotion the only two problem balls he had were the two he's just cannoned into but if he's on that one to the middle he can probably just screw back and cannon the yellow just next to it which will leave him position on the ones nearby and the two reds at the top end of the table the right hand of the table we look they are a straight plant and that will be for the end of the finish because that's where the black is oh well what happened there that is the first time I think we've actually seen Mark Farnsworth miss a, miss a pot that is very, very unlike him. <laughs> he's been so consistent once he's been at the table, and he's missed a relatively simple shot. Again, it was a bit like one of Simon's misses earlier. He was trying to cannon the yellow thick, which means he wanted to pop that on the thick side so he could get the cannon he wanted. So he was trying to pinch the far part of that pocket. He wasn't looking at the centre of the pocket. So it always looks a worse miss than it actually is. Don't get me wrong, it's still a really surprising miss. And it, you know, he'd still be, yeah. But uh, that, you know, it's, he was trying, trying to really get the edge of that pocket. The only reassuring thing he's he can tell himself is he's going to go come back to the table it's not the end of the frame didn't leave Simon with an awful lot there yeah I'm not sure that's the best shot from Simon I'm not sure what if how Mark can be too aggressive here but Simon's thinking maybe that he Simon, that Mark will have to play the the red by the black spot and move that up the table maybe give him control at the bottom half of the table perhaps yeah, I'm just wondering what Mark will be thinking I wonder whether he can double the one he's whether those yellows are a little below and he can double that he may be able to just play the yellow nearest the black spot and stun on to the, the red and yellow and just leave Simon nothing Fascinating tactical battle here. And if you are watching us here on Free Sports, a reminder we will be switching over to Premier Sports HD very, very shortly. In fact, that's Sky Channel 428 to watch for free. And it's also going to be on the IPA Pool YouTube channel as well. If you want to continue watching this enthralling encounter. That's a fantastic shot from Mark. It's not, not a brilliant positional shot, but the great pot. He's now got a big, big problem with the red and yellow. Yeah, terrific shot from Mark Farnsworth. And we are going to wind our coverage down now on free sports. We will see you on Premier Sports HD or the IPA Pool YouTube channel in just a moment. Welcome, those of you joining us on Premier Sports HD to the 2018 IPA World Championships here at the Cedar Court Hotel in Bradford. Stephen Jameson and Simon Webb joining you for what's been an incredible match. And you join us at the height of drama as well. Mark Farnsworth, the number one seed, taking on Simon Ward, seeded number eight here in the first quarter final match of these World Championships. 
And we've just seen, Simon, two surprising back-to-back -back misses, having yep. had a match of ut utter quality. All of a sudden, the misses are just starting to litter this match. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, maybe it's a sign of the nerves out there for at this stage of the match, but Mark Farnsworth has not missed a ball in three, three and a half sets, and he's missed two in this frame, and then Simon's just missed a pot as well. So mistakes are starting to creep in from both players. shot from Mark just to get that pot away he'll want to be in a good position with the white this is the replay from the miss from Simon and it's a pot he will feel he should have got yeah Mark's got he's left Mark a pot to the top Simon would have sat down thinking I'm still okay here because that red and yellow at the bottom of the table that is very very difficult for Mark to get into from any of the other reds and it doesn't pot at all from where he is now so he's got a real problem even though he's made a very good pot to the top right the two reds do plant he could pop that screw back a few inches and play the the red to the right center come on and off the top cushion and into that red but you need a bit of fortune to finish on it so he's going to try and play off the plant as if this shot wasn't already difficult enough He's just trying to have a look, I think, to see if that goes into the left centre. I think it must go into the left centre the way he's played that. If he was to go into it from this plant, he'd be knocking the yellow towards the bottom left pocket, which is not really going to help him because that's covered by the yellows. So I think you're right. I think he's playing on this into the left centre. This still isn't an easy shot, though. It has to worry about in the plant, which... Should be relatively straightforward, but the position has to be pretty perfect here. Yeah, it's all about the position onto this red at the bottom of the table. Now, he has played into it. It obviously didn't go because he, he did try and play into it, I think. I, I, I don't know. If he, did, if he did try and play on it, he was a, quite a long way away. But then if he was trying to play into it, he didn't have enough pace. So it's difficult on that. It's difficult on the tail. One thing that we can say is post-shot, that's about as worse an outcome as Mark Farnsworth could have had. Yeah, he's sort of popping himself into a bit of a bit of a problem here. With every ball that goes down, Simon Ward becomes more favourite for this frame. Yeah, I was just about to say, some people might be saying, well, at least he posted the ball, actually. If he's going to end up like that in the position afterwards, he'd have rubbed that red on the table. So it's just a safety from Mark. Yeah, he wanted to cover the yellow nearest the black, and it's, you can't quite tell if he can pot this. I think he can see it, can't quite, quite tell if he can pot it. If he can't, then it's quite a clever safety from, from Mark, although he would have wanted the red to travel a little bit further down the table to make it an easier pot should Simon leave him a shot at it. It's very, very tight, that yellow at the top of the table. He can definitely hit it, whether he can see the potting angle. Another I think, prospect altogether. I think the way he's lining it up, he can pot this. You know, you can see oh, that there, but I think he can pot this and come down the table. He's now going to need to go into the red and two yellows at some point as well. You see how he potted that off the, the thin jaw, which means he used as much of the pocket as he could to pot that. So he's got a, quite a nice angle now to pot the yellow and go into this cluster here. You can pot the yellow into the centre and just cannon into those. well for him yeah, it has they've opened up really nicely for him but because he's hampered on that red this next shot is actually quite tricky the pots are given you can't miss the pot but to get the next positional shot you need to stun it out or, sc or screw across the face of the other yellow but from it hampered might. queuing that's really difficult he might even consider getting a form of rest out here that's could be very awkward yeah he's quite a tall guy it's, it's just he can't quite get to the part of the white he needs to be able to play the positional shot he needs. Oh, he was he had enough room to be able to top through, so that's okay. That's where his height has really come into that. I'm not sure a couple of players could have made that shot. No, I think uh, height definitely helps him there. Not many times Simon would need a rest on a pool table. So now that he's back in absolutely perfect position. 
the key is going to be the pace of the shot he plays to get onto the black. It's up on the top rail, miles away from the other yellow. He should have a nice angle to be able to drift up the... So if he, roll, if he pops this one to the bottom left now, rolls through just, just past the red, he'll have plenty of angle to go up the left-hand side of the table, leave himself on the black to the top right. It's very easy to under and hope over hit this shot. Whenever the white's travelling such a long distance, it's more margin of error, more, uh, more room for error. Played to perfection. Yeah, terrific shot from you know, Mark, from uh, Simon Ward rather, and Mark Farnsworth. You can see the, the, the wry smile on his face as that's landed in the most awkward position it could be from the shot he played. Right. If that bounces off the cushion an inch, it's just an easier shot, but he was fine. He could still make the pot. And Simon Ward jumps ahead in this set. We could well be in for an epic here. You see there the match summary. If you're just joining us on Premier, it is race to four in a set, and then race to three in sets to win the match outright. We are currently at 2-1 to Simon Ward. Mark Farnsworth has to win these next two sets. At the minute, he is behind in set number four. It's worth pointing out as well, Simon Ward now only two frames away from an upset might be over-egging it, but a slightly surprising victory, certainly if it doesn't go all the way. Yeah, I think it's always a surprising victory when the number one seed goes out, but Simon's a fantastic player and he's the number eight seed himself, a regular winner on the tour. It certainly wouldn't be regarded as a, a surprise, should Simon win, possibly with the with the bookies maybe, but uh, not amongst the, the players themselves. He's a touch unfortunate. That has come up dry for him. The ball's looking very invitingly over some of the pockets. Yeah, there's a big, big problem area at the top right end of the table. 30 seconds. He probably wants to be... Well, he's got a problem either way. See, if he goes... He's got the yellow at the top of the table. Just there, causing a problem. If he, he could play a red-yellow to plant it in, or he could take yellows and then take control of the frame. He may not go for the finish. If he does take the yellow, if he does pop the yellow he's nearest to, then the yellow just here becomes the problem ball, which is why he's taking the yellow to the centre. He's going to move it now. That's a really good shot. Yeah, it's a really good shot. Identify the problem ball, go straight after it. He's left himself on the bottom yellow here, just the right of the one near the base of the triangle, as it were. Yeah, so he's got one more problem area to solve. The red in amongst the two reds at the top of the table. That doesn't go, it will need to be moved. He may look in a second to get the white onto the right-hand side rail, because then he'll be able to pot the red, the, the yellow over the, the top right and stun across to cannon the red, which will move the yellow out the fraction, and he'll st could still be on the... If he can get the white onto this side rail, anywhere along here, he'll be able to cannon the, yeah, play the yellow and cannon into the other yellow. Just played it slightly differently. He's still got the um, still got the yellow near the black to play off here. What I think he's what I think he's, the plant. Yeah, what I'm thinking he's he's looking at the plant, but he's going to play the plant. But he wants to hit the cushion first, so that yellow he's playing now is going to fly across into the red and yellow. And, and that's not come out brilliantly for him. He's still he's still a chance here, but that didn't really pan out as he wanted it to. He's a touch unlucky, isn't he? He is a touch unlucky. He played that quite nicely. He was always going to stay on the yellow at the bottom end of the table next to the black, but he was hoping to be on one of the ones at the top of the table. 
he now needs to pot the yellow at the bottom end of the table and he needs to get the white up into the bulk area but on the left hand side that's not that bad actually he, that's probably not far off where he's playing it he's still going to play the same shot that I was thinking he can pop the, the yellow to the top right and he's going to cannon into the the yellow and red together and then he's, he's relying on a little bit of luck to still be on it yeah, <laughs> there's it no is, other balls on the table it is a touch hit and hope this probably accepted that he couldn't get too close to this yellow and just gave, made sure he gave, gave himself a shot at it rather than trying as I said to get up near the bulk line this could well decide the frame how this ends up is he going to be on the yellow well he might not need to be he'll be thrilled with that that's quite incredible <laughs> <laughs> How's your luck? Well, Marks is in, and he's on the black. On another day, that rolls in the middle of the bottom cushion, and you've got no shot on when it's uh, going for you. He's played it. The thing is, he's played a great shot, and he deserves his reward for that. The well, black is duly dispatched. We are level again in this fourth set, two apiece. in a set that Mark Farnsworth has to win to stay in the competition. And there is the match stats as it stands. It couldn't be an awful lot closer. The only thing which I feel the two stats there which might make the biggest difference are missed pots and dry breaks and it's pretty much flipped in terms of it. Mark Farnsworth's biggest problem has been his dry breaks, Simons has been missed pots and that's given Mark opportunities within frames and that's why this game is so close because it is that even. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And Mark is not having there the problem of a dry break. He will get a visit hit, which is just what he was hoping for. That's the break again. Again, it went in quite early in the reds. And he got through that quite nicely as well, because you can see how far the blacks moved there. It's potentially his best break so far. Yeah, he seemed to catch that one a little bit better. You've got a little bit more separation. Still, you can still see a difference in the split. He's, it's, it's still not ideal for him. He's, he's got a, a problem on the, the bottom rail as we look. He can nudge into the black and red here. Just thinking from having watched Mark Farnsworth play over these last couple of days that yellow that's on the right cushion if you can put the yellow next to it just opens it up for the double which he does seem to play oh so well yeah i think he's going to cannon into it now though he, ha he, he it's a, in a perfect space for a double in a couple of shots time should he choose but he's got such a nice angle on it now he's going to stun into this he wants to catch it full ball and just pop it out over the middle got the double kiss which is not quite what he wanted but it's come out enough and I said he was going to nudge into the black two shots go. The black must go to the top left for him to leave it without nudging it. He had the perfect angle to nudge it. So he now he's, he can now stun. He's got the yellow to the left centre. He can now screw across the table for the right down the rail. Uh, the, the yellow down the right rail. You can see there the black does pass the red into the far corner pocket. It's tight, but it does go, which is, as you rightly said, Simon, exactly why Mark's chosen to leave that be. the yellow down the rail which is his hardest ball that he's got left to his last ball he may he may look, look at moving it getting he could play on it now he had options there 
The reason I said he might leave it till last is it was a better ball to get on the black with. But I think, I wonder if the black might come down to the bottom right-hand pocket. Either way, he's not got on the yellow as he wanted to. He wanted to be straight on this, or much straighter. This is a much tougher bot than he was ever hoping for. This yellow is altogether a little bit more tricky than it needed to be for Mark. Yeah, he just needs to control the white across the table as well. Great pot. Great pot. That's a brilliant shot from Mark. Recovers the situation. I think he's got an angle on this yellow now that he can screw back past the red and black and take the black into the same pocket as the yellow. It won't be perfect on it, because I don't think that, that black comes down to the pocket as we look now. So he'll be screwing back to probably not far off where, it, where the white is now. It doesn't look he is. Oh, he can pot it into the middle. That's so deceptive. I thought that, that red was in the way. You can see how he had to play that off the far part of the jaw. He didn't have the centre of the pocket for that. <laughs> the ripple of applause around the table as well. More and more people piling in to watch this one. Settling in for the evening here in Bradford. And they're being treated here to a really, really close game. That is the state of play that we've seen today. All these games have been played today. Mark Farnsworth cruised through this afternoon against Brian Halcrow. Three, three sets to nil. Dan Davey was narrowly beaten by Simon Ward in a real epic and Simon Ward was straight on here into another. He's already had two games that have gone 3-2 in this competition. He may well have another one but this time will he be on the right end of it? We've got three more quarterfinals to come this evening. We'll be bringing you another one here on Premier Sport HD. These two players have really given us some great entertainment here. That's the state of play. Three frames to two. Mark Farnsworth will want to win this next frame if he gets a visit. He might not get a visit because Simon here will be back and it's looking fairly nicely for him. It's a really big break from Simon. You see how many balls have gone into the top half of the table. It just shows how much power he's got in the break, especially when you compare it to, to Mark's break. He's surely looking at yellows from this position. Yeah, the yellows are not too bad from here. He hasn't got a red on either way. He might be able to heat, pop the red at the bottom of the table, but I think he's looking at yellows. The only yellow he's going to have a problem with is this yellow here. But he's, he's going to try and move it off his next shot. So let's pop this to the top right now. It looks like he might just cannon past it, but he's going to, he's going to try and cannon into the yellow. From the overhead, it looked like it might be a, a fraction too thin or too thick, sorry, but I think he's got the perfect angle. This is just natural, just to can into it, full ball, leave himself on the one at the top. It was a little thin, but he'll be more than happy with that. That's a great shot, yeah. He's very much on the yellow, or I think either yellow into either middle pocket, and he's got his problem ball out, and it looks like we may well be going here to another decider in this third set. Two of our three frames so far have gone the very distance. Yeah, We've absolutely. He's, um, he's he just he's got everything out. He's opened the balls up. He only had one problem, another big break. He's just got to work his way through them now. And he's, he's, he's got a very natural looking table. He can pop this into the right centre now. And he's going to go on and off the top side cushion. He's got the, that for the yellow at the top of the table. He can drop that and leave himself the one in the middle. And the only slight problem, oh, actually I say a slight problem, I thought because the natural pocket for the, the last yellow is going to be the one lowest to the table, would be into the centre, but I suspect he will play for it into the right corner. And he's quite a big pocket with the red being there. If he finishes straight on that, the black will be, be there for him. 
He's got a couple of options for his getting on the, the, the final ball. I suspect he'll play for it into the bottom right corner. There's a genuine possibility here that we head into a decider and have only dropped two possible frames that <laughs> yeah. could have been played. Yeah, absolutely. Which is quite remarkable. OK, he's got a little bit more angle on this yellow now, so I think he, he now needs to come down the table for the yellow into the centre. He just needs to avoid the red. Just wants this white to drift past the red and go, go down towards the black. And very, very nicely controlled. And should have no problems from here. As you say, we're looking at another decider. Third set in a row. We're going to go to a 4 3 deciding set, deciding frame. Simon Ward pots the black, and we do go to a decider. Simon Ward is one frame away from the win. Mark Farnsworth is one frame away from taking us to a final set here. <coughs> it's really in the balance. There is the summary. You can see there we've only dropped two possible frames so far. Mark Farns has won the opening set by four frames to one. And it really doesn't get much closer than that. Yeah, absolutely huge frame again. All these four, all these three, three frames at the end of each set are, are such big frames. We play a lot of straight races in, in pool and set plays a slightly different dynamic and these, these, these frames are the reason we do it for the World Championships. Great viewing for us. Yeah, it really does build the drama. This is a crucial break for Mark Farnsworth. He's been much better in this set from the break. Now is the one time he doesn't want to let him down and I think it might. That's come up dry and with a ball over the pocket. Mark Farnsworth does not look a very happy man. It's the replay. Yeah, Hell, that red didn't drop, I'm not too sure. He's relying on a mistake from, from Simon now, and he's got a very, very nice table. These reds look very inviting for him. The only red, it's a slight issue. It's not, there isn't really a, a problem issue. He could look to clear the reds at the bottom of the table first and work his way up to the top end of the table where the, where the black is. There's no clusters, there's no cannons required. He's got a simple starter. This really is his chance for the match. Looks like he's going to go, might go the other way and clear the one on the top rail next. Yeah, I think that might be his, his plan now. The reason being that I, I sort of always look at the leave you know clear areas but the black goes so comfortably from any red at the bottom of the table would be easier to get on the black than the red on the top rail so let's clear clear that out of the way still got, it doesn't matter if he finishes straight he doesn't want to finish straight on the one on the rail because he's pretty because he's, he's got the one over the pocket but he won't have to try and punch out for the black so it's really good thinking really to, to do that This is perhaps the most difficult shot he actually has left. If he gets this one right, he really is in the driving seat. He doesn't need to do too much with this either. He just needs to make the pot, let the white come out naturally, just a few inches off the off the rail, and he'll be on the one over the pocket. He may play it a bit firmer to try and get further down the table. Depends how confident he's feeling. He did. And in fact, he just wants that to stop. You can see there. In fact, he's not. He's going to leave the one around the pocket. And maybe the last ball onto the black hit. Yeah, he's just having a, a look. He's, the, the red that's in between those two yellows, it goes comfortably, and you, it's not too bad to get on, but it is, you could make a mistake getting onto it. So he's just looked at the yellow there, and he's going to play this red onto the, he's going to play the white on and off the top cushion and try and cannon that yellow, almost full ball. You see, he's just playing this with a little bit of right-hand side get that cannon and now surely no mistakes from here for Simon oh, perfect shot from Simon Ward and that could be the shot which decides this frame and indeed this match 
it should be fairly routine from here. Just double checking every possible eventuality. I think the way this match has gone, I think it uh, sums it up that it's come from a dry break from Mark Farnsworth and a reverse dish from Simon. It's been the biggest impact on this match, really. So he's left himself a little bit of an angle here to get up to the black off this final red over the pocket. It's quite often deceptive when there's when the red's right in the pocket like this it's much easier it's not as easy to get position as it, if it was a few inches away from the pocket it's it's not it, it looks so simple it's not as simple as it looks it's so easy to get into this just a fraction too much and find yourself behind the yellow that is all mark fans with here can hope for Where does Sun Ward leave the keyboard? He's passed it, and Mark Farnsworth knows at that point this is the final blow for Simon Ward. And he takes the match. Terrific performance from the Welshman, who knocks out the number one seed. Mark Farnsworth is out of the World Championships. What a match it was as well. Simon Ward has done it after a real battle to get through from the last 16 he has really had to work hard there to make it through the quarterfinal and he's into the semis yeah fantastic performance from simon he was right up against it in that first set with mark playing absolutely flawless really to take the first set 4-1 but from there you can see how much of a battle it's been with 4-3 four, three, three times uh, Simon Ward was, was uh, just worked his way into the match and played brilliantly there at the end. And you can see there how close it was. 4-1 the first set and then Simon Ward winning three on the spin by four frames to three. Brilliant entertainment hit and we'll be hearing from the winner very, very shortly. That's after the break. So a very warm welcome back to the Cedar Court Hotel in Bradford. Delighted to say joined by the winner of our last match. Simon, another epic. You seem to be involved in plenty of them throughout this competition. How did that find how did you find that one? Uh, that was great. I think it was that was a better performance overall because um, I started off badly and I, I I didn't think I was gonna miss a ball towards the end. I thought felt really, really good. So um, and obviously I I just come off the back of a four hour marathon in the last sixteen as well. So I was chuffed to get the win. And how is that dynamic when you have to play two really, really tough grinding matches in pretty much back to back? Yeah, it's really strange. I'd have loved a break in between, but I didn't feel that fatigued. I, as I say, I, I hope, hopefully, I was hoping it wouldn't go to a final set. Because I think, you know, you never really know when the fatigue's going to kick in and your concentration's going to dip. But I'm just glad I got over the line in the end. And that match in particular, so difficult, obviously, Mark's such a wonderful opponent. Every set, it felt, was in the balance. Three of them went right down to the wire. Did you feel that it could have gone either way throughout that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, say Mark's number one on the tour. Um, he's number one in the rankings by a, a good way. And so uh, he hasn't, hasn't got a weakness at all in his game. So I just had to take every chance I had. And in the last, particularly the last two sets, I took every chance I had. So, um, and that's what got me over the line in the end. And now in the semi-finals, of course, this must be feeling pretty optimistic for you. Yes, absolutely. I say I'm playing really well. If I can sort of play today, uh, play tomorrow like I did today, I've got every chance. I wish you all the very best. Best luck tomorrow. Thanks so much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very much, mate. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow.